let's rock. I like how I said let's rock and then like opponents like sitting there tanking. Oh, do I go first? This is what we're playing. This was submitted by The Boring. What's up, real? Oh, this hand's good. Except for the barrel. But can't, can't, we can't mulligan away a hand that's got cantrips and dudes. They'll probably put us on like mono white enchantments with the main deck ley lines. Honestly, not something I would have gone with. Do I still have that white, blue white brain? I don't know if I've ever done a blue white brain. I know we did. I know we did a bant brain. He's, just, he's affinity, so this ley line doesn't mean skadoosh. Does not mean squat. Yeah, so real, um, I posted uh, on the Facebook page a brain deck not too long ago. Um, on the Facebook channel. The channel page on Facebook, I should say. Let me take a look. Might have just what you're looking for. I made an Esper one recently. Oh gosh, if I'm not removing that Steel Overseer, we're in trouble. Or not! Maybe we just win. That's a worship. <laughs> Maybe we just win? Hang on, I found something for you. Take a look at this. It's, uh, it's an Esper brain. It's a little toolboxy. You take a look at that. Whoa, it's not what I wanted to do, Magic Online. Sometimes it'll do that on your fetches. So now we don't get to serum and also carry to it, unfortunately. Or no, we can. Yeah, what am I saying? We can still do it. Uh, does this land drop change anything? Not really. Unless he, like, Gal Blasts my Noble Hierarch. I guess if he's gonna... That's true. Let's keep the Windswept. Yeah, Grizzle Brains. Uh, was something I wanted to play tonight, probably after this. Unless... Somebody from the uh, Game Wisp subscriptions comes online, then I'll probably just fulfill theirs. So I wanted you guys to know that I've been doing a good job keeping up with these. Let's see. So, um, what do I have left to do? It's this is really nice. It lets me keep up with the with the subs. So I only have four deck lists out of seven to finish. We already did these three, um, or no? Excuse me. These are waiting for user input. Excuse me. Um, but I had more than this. I've already, I think I've done two so far. Those are the ones that take the longest. These, I, I did all the custom bot commands, or at least wrote back to you guys about them. And then, uh, let me send a reminder. Actually, wait a minute. I think I, I think I did these. Oh, you know what I knocked out? I knocked out the, um, I knocked out the, um, the one where it's I put you guys on the Twitch page. That's the one I knocked out. That one's not too bad. Yeah, and I redid all the buttons. I don't know if you guys have looked. I redid the buttons. I've got new music. So, a lot of exciting, exciting stuff. Well, it's one brain you can search up. But I hope you like these. I redid the buttons. I uh, deleted some of the out-of-date ones. And I put on my schedule what I think I can do. The ones I'm not sure about are Tuesdays and Thursdays. But Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I definitely can do. Yeah, and I got my own little little sub button there, and really exciting. 
I think this worship's going to be like sweet though, because he, here in, in theory the opponent would overseer, their overseer would let them beat an Elishnor in here, but because we have the worship, I feel like that gives us plenty of time to set up like an Iona or you know, I guess we could get both of the girls out and that would probably beat his board. I don't know. I mean like, we could stalemate technically because he's got flyers. Is that awkward? It's a little awkward. Like, worship's fine, but it has to, like... Yes, the worship buys me a bunch of time. But if we're not actually... Like, I wish we were, you know... I wish the math was sound that we could just... That I could guarantee we have another turn. But, I mean, if he draws, like, a plating, like, I can't just... I can't not slam the worship, you know? Like, I think I'm just supposed to... Visions. Visions here. And then worship. What's up, G-Man? But I'm excited. New interface too. I think you guys noticed that I redid everything. I wanted everything to make more sense with the BSMG operatives. So if you haven't heard about that, let me know. But I wanted everything to, to look. I know it doesn't look great yet, but uh, that's, that's what I was going for. Ooh, we don't have basic planes in this thing. Well, I guess white's the splash. That's fair. Doesn't really matter what I get here. I guess the thing that fixes us the best would be if I had it a hollowed fountain. I think we added a hollowed fountain to the deck in a later build. Yeah, you like the 007? I I think it makes sense, like Bruce Spy, you know? I could have gone with like a, I guess like a Bill Nye themed one, but there are not really that many good ones out there. I'm glad you like it, G Man. And the uh, the sub the sub notification is 007 themed as well. Let me show you what it looks like. I don't really want either of these. Although Gavany would maybe let me go over the top of a Steel Overseer. Maybe. Let's play the worship just to be safe. Yeah, that's true, G-Man. That is that is exciting. Somebody told me on stream that he's getting another show uh, just the other day. So that was neat. But uh, we'll see how the new music goes. I think the only thing it's missing is I want to link... Um, I want to somehow have it so you guys can see what's playing in chat. We had that at one point. The only thing we can lose to now is the Nexus, correct? So as long as I can beat this Ink Moth, we win this, right? So we just have to beat this Nexus. Oh, you know what? He has more than enough artifacts to just put them all in the Nexus, doesn't he? So I guess we're going to game. Well, we've got a pretty good sideboard for affinity. I think we're running three stonies, or at least two stony silences. Yeah, no, he's got us. Yeah. I was like, oh, we just have to beat an ink moth. Oh crap, he can make it a ten. All right, claims stonies. Oh man, we do have three stonies in this version. This should be a cinch. Maybe damnation. Maybe Iona's not great here. I mean, Emrakul might be good enough. All right, ley lines out, and ancestral's out. I I never know how I feel about ancestral in, in this matchup because it's just it's so it's so much about the burst, but cutting our draws to the stony is not great. Like cutting our draw power to get to the stony is not a good idea necessarily, but then again, um, why don't we cut the thoughtsies? One Umbero writes. Um, I just don't know how I feel about Ancestral, you know? It's kind of one of those... Probably gonna get us there kind of things. Yeah, let me show you what the, the, the sub... What the sub message looks like. That's a test. 
guess I want to play first. I need to remember to pause the music though when that plays. Just like a lot of the other notifications I have. God, I wish we could keep this. Like, yeah, Ancestral is too slow. I wish we could keep this because, ah, like if it had green, <laughs> I think we're going to mulligan. Plus, we could be looking for a six that has, um, that has a stony. This doesn't have any draw, but opponent kept a seven. We'll keep here. Bottom that. I mean, just because we have some awesome stuff doesn't mean we're going to draw it, you know? Like, there's certainly a possibility we're still just toast. Uh, but so, something that's exciting. So the deck I'm playing right now is part of the new sub-program, G-Man, and real... Um, basically, I'm working with, um, or I'm using, I shouldn't say working with, I'm using uh, a new streaming um, platform. That looks better. Stream, uh, what's the word? Stream. It's just, it's another tool. It, it lets me, um, that's not what we wanted to see. It will be thinning. It's just going to let me manage... It's going to let me do subs and also manage them really nicely. Um, so I'm really excited about that, G-Man. I can tell you guys more after this game what the features are, but in a nutshell, uh, it's recognition, friends lists, bot command, and then the last one is the most important. It's once a month... So, so something, something that... Because um, I've subbed to some channels in my time as a Twitch viewer, and something that I wish that a lot of channels had was when you resub that you get something. So what I, how I'm going to do it is um, when you first sub, and then anytime you resub, you get to resubmit uh, a deck list. You heard about it last time? Yeah, I don't want to sound like a broken record. It's just it's it's news. It's new to the stream, so I feel like I, I have to talk about it a little bit just to kind of uh, get the word out there. But I certainly don't want to dwell on it. But I, I, again, I think the coolest thing about it is the fulfillment tab. While well, he's he's still kind of deciding over there. The um, the coolest thing about it is this fulfillment tab. I could see this being a useful tool even if you're already a partner because like it's it lets me know I have seven decks I still need to do. Only four of them are in: Slow Hero, Red Baron, that's TJ, and Bill Nye, the CSI guy. These guys haven't sent me their deck lists yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and remind them. But yeah, these guys have sent me deck lists, and then I can look at the deck lists. And some of them have sent me... Actually, all of these guys sent me deck lists, which is awesome. It gives me something to work with. You don't have to do that. Just just give me, like, an idea. But um, And actually, Corthian messaged me and told me he wanted to, to me to make some changes to the list he sent me. So, you know. I try, I'll try to be flexible with it, but that's so cool. And, you know, it'll help me keep track of the other stuff, too. Like the custom bot commands, the friends list stuff. These I'm all caught up on. See, it just says I'm waiting for user input, so I've caught up on all those. And, oh, opponent's back. Just as a streamer, I, that was something I was always worried about with, with like, a subscriptions. Like, like, saying that I have features for you guys and then actually managing those features. This Game Wisp is awesome. Because it, like, literally, name by name is going to let me keep track of each and every one of you guys. That way I never have to worry. Because even with the Patreon, sometimes I feel like... Yeah, you understand? I, I feel like even sometimes the Patreon, like, uh, there was this one time, G-Man, where I missed uh, getting the email about the... Um, I, I forgot to give... It's not that I forgot to give them. It's just literally... It's hard to keep track. It wasn't on purpose, but I missed somebody for either the articles or the playlist, something... And uh, they like emailed me, and this was like weeks after they'd already signed up for Patreon. They're like, "Hey, man, I I didn't get such and such." And I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me get that to you right away." But I feel like I'm not gonna have that issue with this this particular software ever. The fact that it like I 
first of all, I'm, I'm only keeping track of the friends list, the bot commands, the brew sessions, and of course, all of you guys who have subbed so far, you are on the panel. Uh, I did finish doing that. So you guys are all here. The, the first nine, anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So that's cool. Um, I did not call it Invincible. That is a great question. Um, the uh, slow hero, the guy that sent it in to me, uh, he called it Invincible because it's got the worships. I think that's why he wanted to call it Invincible. Um, but uh, was this done by Hans? This was not Hans. This was James Horner, so we're going to skip it. Um, that's what I wanted to listen to. That's why I picked it, Amazon. I wanted to listen to some Hans Zimmer. Yeah, that's, that's what he wanted to call it, Sino. So I'm doing this new thing. It's, it's, it's kind of a new thing. I'm, I'm literally taking directly uh, deck lists from you guys. Or I should say submitted deck lists, and I'm, I'm tweaking them. I'm brewing with them. We had a live brew session with the guy that sent in this list with me, so it was kind of like a little one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, in a way, obviously, there's still everybody else here, uh, but that's kind of the goal. Is it's like it's like you guys get like your own little like once a month you get your one-on-one -on -one time with me, and I get to I get to take your your standard or modern or legacy. I guess maybe even vintage, because I got the new sponsor perks. So yeah, just just whatever it is, send it in. Uh, I'll mess with it. You can be there on live chat with me, and we can we can we can fix it together or, or try to make it better. Whatever. Um, I'm really excited about that feature, though, G man. That's the thing I'm most excited about about uh, Game Wisp. That I finally have a way to do it and justify it. And holy crap, this is an awesome draw. I think we're just gonna naturally cast this Elish like we're one land away. Does he have... He does not have the Infect creature this time. We might have just gotten there. But yeah, it's the Worships. Yeah, I mean, until he draws... So we just have to beat him before he draws a... Um, so any Mana Source casts Elish. I think the Emrakul is out of place. He said he, it's kind of a pet card of his. Unfortunately, I can't crack this Windswept. That is relevant. Yeah, we have a lot of fetches. That is relevant. I cannot crack the windswept. It's not like, you know, the fetch land deals damage to us, it's you pay one life. This Emmy is not that many types less. Alright, so we just have to hope these birds don't die. Until we draw an actual mana source. Even if it's a shock land, we can we, we probably have time for it to come in tapped. Grizzle Brains hasn't been played yet, real. Uh, so you are in for a real treat uh, if you stick around. That's what I'm going to play after this deck. Uh, Grizzle Brains, it's only 1.0. We haven't really figured out all the kinks. But uh, something that was holding me back from play, playing a deck like this for you guys on stream certainly was um, the, well, the fact. <laughs> the fact that those cards are expensive. Like, the other three Emrakuls and the other two Grizzle Brands I had to borrow. Make this over faster. Um... Worship is not a fast card. <laughs> this is not a fast deck, man. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try. Excited for your great way to revitalize the stream. Thanks, G-Man. But yeah, I don't want to dwell on it, but super excited about it. I, I feel like it's going to be really not only competitive, but fun for you guys, fun for me. Um, just getting to see more deck lists on stream, I think is going to be good for both of us. Both for you guys out there, also for those of you that want to see uh, your deck played. Like, I know plenty, I used to have plenty of deck ideas, but I'd never, you know, in, outside of like, I did a little bit of Cockatrice in my days in my time. So getting to see it fleshed out and then also the fact that I'm going to be playing it in a competitive setting on Magic Online. I'm actually taking a hit in a way, G-Man, because uh, Modern Leagues 
to play a, like a competitive modern league or legacy league, it's ten tickets or 120 points play points, fun bucks. And then the the sub I I've priced it just like a normal Twitch sub the um, the um, the game wisp. I've priced it the same way. Um, it's it's just the same price. Okay, that's technically a land. <laughs> It's kind of like a land, right? Sort of. The problem is, is this Elish Norn's going to happen a little too late. The Steel Overseer is kind of doing what we were hoping it wouldn't do the first game. So we're going to have to do more than just Elish. Did I put the Damnations in? Yes, I did. Problem with Damnation if I don't have a if I don't have a follow up creature, we're screwed. So the next question is. Oh, well, he just played Ink Moth, so I have to play the Elish. Yeah, we have to play the Elish Norn so the Ink Moth doesn't grow and kill us. I guess we can... I mean, we have, um... Yeah, I have to make sure that these man lands can't... So we're gonna get this Elish down the last possible second possible. Uh, because there's no way the opponent can, um... He won't have the option to... Um, animate and then pump. That's not how that works. It's state based. Elish Norn is a state based. So um, Nexus is no longer an issue. Right, exactly. Like, if we draw another mana dork, we'll just hang on to it. Yeah, it's something. It's something. G man, it, that feature is something I wanted to do for a long time, but I never had a way to manage it. And so it's something that we talked about. It's something that I said I wanted to do, but just actively could not um, do. Our clock's higher than his. I don't care if he's trying to gain infinite life here or slowly, really infinite. Go infinite. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like the fact that our clock is higher is huge here. Do a little bit of F6, The Gathering. So what are we looking for? We're looking for Gifts Ungiven, and we're looking for Damnations. I'll suspend an Ancestral. I'll speed things up. <laughs> Don't be running. Don't be running Vapor Snag, bro. Yeah, uh, new music, cleaned up the panels. Let's go ahead and do some auto yields to that Ancestral. Yeah, we are definitely playing the waiting game. There's not much I can do. I mean, we have we have to draw pretty much Damnation. Now we have two of those. I mean, all, a Stony Silence would be a good draw, too. So, like, Stony... Um, I mean, the waiting game favors us only because our clock is higher. Like, opponent's clock is at 13, we're at 15 and a half. So waiting game does favor us just because it's Magic Online. If this was paper, that's not the case. And that's a major criticism I have for, for Magic Online, I suppose. But, um... It, I mean, it's hard to make something digital 100% the same as something that's paper. It's just, it's, honestly, it's just not possible. I want to stand for Grizzle Brains. Oh, gee, man, I'll probably play Grizzle Brains more than just one stream, man. Lord Zara says, if I can get Emrakul down. If I can get Emrakul down, what? I can animate the lands and kill them. Okay. Okay, I'm with you. What's up, Goblin God? Okay, so we drew a Decay. We should take out the Overseer, right? That's kind of what's going... I mean, arguably, the Life Linker is also what's kind of prolonging this. I think I'm going to toast the Overseer, though. But it might be correct to kill the Lifelinker. Yeah, so how far are we from the Emrakul? 11? I mean, you could justify me playing one bird just to try to get closer to the Emrakul. You could justify maybe playing one of these. 
Paul says, go ahead and play the birds out. Try to try to Emrakul. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's just I don't know if I feel comfortable playing the birds out. If I mean, are we in a are we in a place to really wreck his board to the point where we could win anyway? I guess if we put everything on just like a thopter, like use his ravagers against him. All right, so that'll put us to the eleven mana. So we are going to try to use his Ravagers against him, right? I'm just trying to think of how I'm going to sacrifice everything, you know? Wait, literally, can I just literally sacrifice everything so there's no target for the modular to go to? Like, can't we do that if I do it in the right sequence? Like, sack, 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 sack. Take his turn, fizzle everything to nothing. Just sack everything but the island. Okay, so this is actually dirty then. I just didn't realize how dirty it would be. He's also at 149 life. Watch the damnation now that we're like setting up for the Emrakul. We didn't. Okay. Okay, so Emrakul. Right, this works. Yes? Please? Just do the Ravagers last and you're fine? Okay. This is going to be a dirty Emrakul turn. I'm going to go in F6. Oh, you know what? Did we miscount? We didn't end up using the extra bird that we played out. One, oh, because the Ancestor went off, so we had Sorcery. We didn't need to play the other bird because Sorcery was going to be in the graveyard, so the Emrakul cost less. We should have been paying attention to the Ancestral because, yeah, they gave us Sorcery, so we could have helped us. It doesn't matter, we drew another dork, so even if we did half the damnation. I don't think it'll yeah, I don't think it'll take that long for us to kill him, even though he's at 150 nearly. With our with our uh our team here. What is that? One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Whereas I says, crap, looks like he sees that he's going to sack his Ravagers. Yeah. But we can still kill off his man lands. So we drew an Ink Moth. Thopter cast it, it'll die. Yeah, I did equip the plating to something else. I think the issue here is there's the lifelinker. Oh, I was supposed to block something with the Emrakul there. I think I had a free eat on the pest. Yeah, I was supposed to kill this or this pest. Or not that pest, I was supposed to eat this pest. Yeah, I was supposed to eat one of the pests with my Emrakul, just now. 
It's okay though, we're trying to play quick. Like, now we're only two minutes ahead. Yeah, I feel like this board still, I mean, because of course he saw it, the Ravagers. I feel like this board still means we're going to have to still draw the Damnation. So I said there's no point with attacking. Like, I feel like we're still looking for Damnation. And then we could be dead to a top deck Galvanic. Okay, guy reach. Well, there's a gifts. Gifts would give us well. Iona's not in the deck right now. Still think gifts is one of our better draws. How are we gonna get there? I'm just thinking about it, how, like, how, how are we going to get there? Claim? He does have uh, the ability to move the plating. He's got black, black here, so attacking would make us lose the Emrakul. I mean, real, the problem is that this is League. If this was just tournament practice room, I'd scoop. The fact that Damnation still can potentially give us an out. I think it's worth playing too. So we can claim the Scourge now, so that'll slow down his gratuitous life gain. But what am I gifting to is the issue. I don't think this list was running any snaps, so I don't know if I can make a pile that results in a damnation. If I cast a nation, I don't have the damnation though, Lord Czar. I would have died to infect anyway. Oh, you're saying if we didn't go for the Emrakul? Oh, I should have claimed that. I even said it. I was like, I should probably claim that. Didn't mean to float the extra block there. Let me move this. Yeah, so it's like, what's what's left that we can really utilize here? Rights makes sense to me. Gavany. If we pick Damnation, he's not gonna he's gonna make sure we don't get it. Ancestral and maybe another Gifts. I mean, we could try to bully him into a Stony if we put Damnation and Stony in the pile, and then we would definitely get... Well, he would just give us Gavany and Unburial Rights, but that would eventually win. Right? So maybe that's the pile? Is it Rights? Right, so we get some sort of value no matter what he picks. Stony... It's so powerful in the matchup. So he'll probably give us Gavany and Burial if I do this pile. But that means I it'll take longer for us to draw the damnation. Now let's just put an ancestral there. Or gifts. Now let's put a gifts. So we can do another Stony Silence pile. He'll probably give us gifts and Gavany. Or excuse me, he's gonna give us Gavany and Unburial, probably. I could also see him giving us the uh just said okay though, we gotta stay stay ahead on time. I, I usually build my gift stacks a little different than the one we're playing right now because I do like to be able to do flashback piles. Like sometimes I'll even, I've even put like an Eternal Witness in there, and in addition to Snapcasters, so you can like guarantee certain spells. I think this pile's fine, and it's a thinker for my opponent, so we'll get some of the time back that we used up. So he's gonna give us gifts of rights, I think. I don't think he's going to give us the stony.
Confused why the originalist wasn't running any snaps or baby jace. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd have to ask the brewer. I I like what he was on to, though. I don't hate... I don't hate the list. I think I'll just play the other worship just to be safe seas. Yeah, I, I like killing the Vault Scourge. We should have done that last turn. Okay, so... So he already demonstrated that he's not willing to give us a Gabony, which makes sense. Let's put another Stony and then maybe just some Cantrips. Because, like, we have the things that we want. They're still in the deck. We just have to draw to them. So this... He'll give us Gifts and Serum here, probably. That's what I'm guessing he's going to give me. Commander damage. I think this game might come down to clock damage, Lord Zohar. I think it's going to be clock damage, so we need to be very careful. Oh, well, we just hit a township. So now we can make the game about township. Well, we drew the damnation. Kind of curious what he's holding in hand. Just a little bit. I don't want a damnation until I know for sure his hand's not a gal blast, you know. He does have enough colors to move plating instant speed. Maybe he's hoping that I I do do that. Yeah, he's just moving some platings. Yeah, let's hand check him just to make sure he's not got a sneaky gal blast to kind of steal the game. Alright, there's a Scourge. We'll take that. Alright, so we're going to Damnation here and then reanimate some stuff, right? Well, might as well attack. Yeah, we might as well attack if we're going to sweep. He'll block block here, but still getting some hits. This on the Emrakul. Did I not leave myself enough black? Shoot. <laughs> I think I didn't leave myself enough black there. Oh. I don't know why I tapped my swamp. Oh no no no, the swamp was for the Inquisition. Shoot. Yeah, I thought we had black black, but we didn't. Oh we had black black if I didn't swing one of the birds. That was dumb of me. Oof. We weren't we weren't a mana short, we were uh, we were color short. You had an overgrown? Oh I didn't see it. Oh any top duck to scourge? Okay. Yeah, we did have, we did have another black source. I thought I was sitting there like, where's my other black source? The issue here is he has enough black mana to move one play, plating to Scourge, so actually attacking first doesn't uh, do what we want it to do this time around because of the lifelinker. 
All right, so let's nuke the board. We know sand isn't a gal blast. And then what do we bring back? We bring back Elish, right? Oh, of course, Balls McGee. Yeah, I actually probably was supposed to aim the Ancestral at my opponent. It just seems like such a weird play to do, though. So I didn't think to actually do it. But you're right, I may have needed those turns. I may have needed to aim the Ancestral at my opponent. Fast tapping will be important here. Only thirty seconds behind. We got nine cards left in the deck, I think we're gonna be fine. He's at sixty one. Not that behind, actually. Even though I'm in the red, he's just about to go into the red. He's at 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Or 4 minutes and 45. So we just need to hold the line. We don't actually have to win this. So, uh, this third game. We just have to hold the line. So what's the build of the deck that holds the line the best? That was indeed a game. The Emrakul was relevant there! The fact that we stole his... That's hilarious that that was relevant. Um, if we're just trying to hold the line, I don't think Ancestral is that important. Um, you could argue that maybe we should swap the Ancestrals for something like even Cryptic or uh, Thought Seizes, you know? Um, what do you guys think? I don't know if we need the draw power as much as we need the stopping power. Like, Cryptic is stopping power, um, or Thought Seizes, you know, if we pick, up, pick the right card. <laughs> it was indeed a game. I'm, I'm thinking cryptics. What do you guys think? We got two minutes, and I kind of want to think about it. <laughs> Happy Paladin. That was that was a game. Yeah, of course, balls, McGee. It's good, man. Listen, I fulfilled most of your uh, thingies. I think the only thing I have left to do for you is your deck list. Let's see. 
Cryptic seem better than discard here? I think they are. All right, let's see. What do I have left to do for you? Balls McGee, I just have to do your deck list. But that's the most important part. I mean, that's 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 the reason a lot of you guys signed up. So, yeah, yours was the Walker's list. But now that you're here, we could talk about it. Let's see how much time do I have? Fifty-seven. Yeah, I, I guess just cryptics where we want to go here. I don't I don't see any other major changes I would do. I don't want to remand against Affinity. This makes me want to try magic again. Oh yeah, Happy Paladin. Uh, it's got a dork and it's got a worship. Let's go. So there's our black source. I uh, sign because you're my favorite. Because I'm tied for your favorite magic streamer. That is very kind. There are a lot of magic streamers out there, so that's very kind of you to say. I definitely feel uh, privileged. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh wow, he's in trouble. That's not does not bode well for my opponent. Think he's sitting on a spell pierce? He has to have something. If he's not playing, he has like a hand chock full of spell pierce, right? Let's get godless because that's the other uh, it's the opposing colors of the, the breeding pool. Gotta have something. I don't want to give him access to Thoughtseize. He showed us Thoughtseize last time. Let's not play the Urborg, actually. Let's just go Island. Go, end step, we can Gifts. Maybe he'll draw a land and then tap out so he doesn't have the Spell Pierce anymore. Geek Fortress is my favorite. I like Sean for Bruce, Caleb for Limited, Jim Davis for the competitive scene. Well, J David, excuse me, Jim has put up some great numbers. I mean, what was he? Players' Championship for, yeah, there's a Spell Pierce. We called it, but now we get to resolve the worship. It's fine. It's kind of what we were doing. Ooh, there's a stony. Three minutes. Three and a half minutes. Whoops. Whoa. Hold it, partner. Thanks for the follow, Happy Paladin, on Twitter. Appreciate you. Well, he drew, drew a land. Well, it's a Ravager, but we had the Stony, so we don't really care here. I, mean, I guess we care because it's a creature. It's something. But we don't care that much. Again, I don't know if I really want to fix him into anything. Oh, claim. We ought to yield these. I mean, the thing of it is, we don't really care about taking the hit so because we have the worship. I mean, again, he might have a way to destroy it. So that's something to keep in mind. But we should do we should do as much fetching as we can before we go to to one. But I appreciate that, balls, McGee. Very kind words. Because, you know, I mean, like, th some of the other people you listed are also brewers. They also brew on occasion. So to say that I'm your favorite brewer is a big deal, man. Because I've seen some Caleb brews in my time. And I've seen, I've seen Jim mess around before. 
Actually, wait a minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Once. Yeah, we have. Hang on, I should just gifts now. I over tapped for that, but that's okay because I'm just doing it all now. Not trying to get fancy, just trying to win. Sometimes I like to get fancy with my gifts. Not the case right now. Just trying to get there. Always satisfying. Greetings from the Netherlands, long time not seen. Oh, yeah, the deck is sweet. This is a uh, Slow Heroes deck. I'm just curious what he had. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he just got kind of screwed there. I mean, the Whip Flare would have had a lot of play. These Noble Hierarchs were important. Um, the Masters would have been trouble. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't scoop if I had that hand, you know? I tried to play it out. Alright, so we're three, three and one. It's not awful. Yeah, so, um, Grizzle Brains. Um, the issue is, is this is already logged into our competitive league, so until I finish this one, I can't put Grizzle Brains into the competitive league, but we could do casual league with, um, Grizzle Brains. Yeah, the comeback was sweet there. But yeah, this is, um, and the way I remember now is the way I'm doing it is I'm going to be putting the names next to it. So the deck list we've done so far, we've done Abdo's, Mardu Expertise. Mardudu expertise, and we've also done the Boring's Invincible Gifts. So, I'm not sure exactly what the next list is going to be. Yeah, that game two was crazy. He had like over 200 life at one point. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I guess the next list I'm going to be doing is probably this one. This is, uh, this is yours, Balls McGee. So let's talk about it briefly. Holy Ajani Unyielding Batman. Awesome. Okay, so it's a Deploy the Gatewatch deck. That sounds like fun. I'm guessing there's an Emmy in here for Nahiri. Yep. Nickel Bolas. All right. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like Bolas is discounted by Deploy the Gatewatch. Honestly, like I would, I would get even greedier with the deck. I would almost try to like play like a mass amount of like the super expensive walkers. Like I would play like Bolases and Carns and Ugans. And oh, I see you have an Ugin. I would play a lot of those walkers that deploy the Gatewatch in a way discounts. Like I would try to um, kind of um, like or like planeswalkers like Soren that are six mana anyways. So it's like oh well, I'm paying six mana anyways. Like that's what I would do, but maybe that's not the correct build. Um, like, I would actually build it. I saw once at one point, I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm not going to build it like you have it, Balls. I'm just trying to throw some ideas out there. Like, I saw at one point, I saw somebody build, like, a green Tron that was actually uh, a, um... It, it was a green Tron that was actually uh, a Planeswalker deck. And it was using Oath of Nyssa to filter the Tron mana into the colors necessary for various colors of walkers like he, he even had I think the guy had nickel bolus in there too uh, I play it more like value, okay basically value walker I don't hit something with deploy I have so many good cast walkers that went out that's fair yeah I, I guess I'm I, I'd be making it more glass cannony if I did what I was proposing that's true yeah this seems sweet though man 
right up my alley. Yeah, uh, I'll have to. Oh man, thrown. I'll have to. I'll have to get the the missing cards. Obviously, I don't have a lot of. The, I guess I have more than of this maybe than I think. But I miss. I'm missing some pieces. So I don't know if that's gonna happen tonight because I'm trying. I'm aiming to be uh, asleep by four, and it's three twenty. So. I've tried the Tron Walkers. It was awkward if you didn't have Oath. Oh, okay. So you have tried that? Okay, then I, I take your word for it. So this is just better. Value Walkers. Okay. Yeah, no, those are just my thoughts. I'm, I'm glad that you've you've tried it, so we don't have to <laughs> screw around with it if it's not worth it. But yeah, this is the last. I'm going to plug this for tonight. Game Wisp is awesome. I, I recommend all... If, if anybody in the room... I know a couple of you guys are streamers. If you're a streamer... Use Game Wisp. This is really, really cool. I'm able to manage the benefits that I want to give for my subs very easily. Um, so, like, you know, it's just, it's really, I'm blown away. I think it's really going to change. I think even if you are already a sub stream, you should, you should get it so you can add more features to your subs and manage them more easily. Um, certainly, let's see that 4-1. All right, all right. You sure you want to just see Grizzle Brains a little bit? I promised. Uh, is he still here? Let me see if Real's still awake. If Real's still in here, Real, I'm gonna play Grizzle Brains in the practice room for you, my friend. What do we name it? Yeah, Grizzle Brains. I don't even know if it works. <laughs> it's, it's just the prototype. What did we lose to, Gablu guy? With uh, we lost to Tron, right? With the Esper deck, with the Gifts deck, we lost to Tron. I'm pretty sure. We I know we beat Burn. It was Burn Jund and just now Affinity. So that's pretty good. Yeah, this list beat. It was we lost to Tron in the first round, games one and three, but we won out against Jund, Burn, and just now Affinity. This list isn't finished though. We need to cut one card. I would almost just cut the main board Thoughtseize and put it in the board. Thoughtseize can be so bad in this meta right now. I mean, sure, the 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 suicide, you know, the suicide zoo is gone, but there's still plenty of aggressive uh, strats being played. I I think the major thing that I wanted to change with this list, and I did, I made some other iterations of the invincible gifts from the boring. Like the first thing I did was I moved the ley lines out of the main. Uh, I thought that was awkward, and I tweaked the mana base a little bit, tinkered with it if you will. And then I think the version we ended on was this. Uh, but the one that I took to the to the league uh, was his version. So when you guys... I, I'm not using the word if, I'm going to use the word when. When you guys sub, I'll do my best to play the deck uh, as you had it. Because I just think that's fair. Alright, let's keep this. Do we even want to loot here? I guess we just want to play Neonate. Neonate. Insolent. He's going to think we're Dredge. <laughs> Insolent Neonate, go! Mm, yes, yes. Crack it in my end step. Hit a Stinkweed Imp. Dredge it. That's not what I'm planning on doing with that. Ooh, we have options. Beck. Call. Oh, I meant to attack first and then give him the fudge. I screwed that up. My one damage! No! No! It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, wow, his man is awkward if he's going. Yeah, he led Fortress, and then he's using Fortress to cast a Serum. Yes, I meant to attack first. Yes. It's okay. I think we should go. We still can win this. Fairy Conclave. Is this um I thought people stopped playing Ascendancy with the uh the uh Gataxian probe ban. 
Ah, we drew an expertise, but not... I guess if we attack with Neonate and then we loot into a land, we can cast the expertise. I guess it's a free draw at this point because we're not shuffling away anything that we wish we had, you know? It's not clearing our graveyard. Oh, yeah. I think we just go for takeoff here. Okay, so do you bet call or do you breaking entering first? I feel like we're supposed to breaking entering. I mean, you just shuffled an Emrakul into the deck. Oh, hey, we wait two turns to do then trigger on the stack, use brain for Karizevs. All right, happy paladin. You have a good night, my friend. Uh, happy to get you back. I, I should use the word happy. Paladin, I'm glad to get you back into Magic Online. Or in, back into Magic. You said you'd, you'd stop playing or something. So I'm happy to get you interested in Magic again. It is a wonderful, wonderful game. So hold up, hold up. I think we just go for it while the shields are down, guys. I think we just try to put him on a no-lander. I think we just... Uh, breaking entering, try to... Discard Emmy to Neo, then use Brain for Breaking. Um, well, but we didn't know we were going to have the other land, but I, I see what you're saying. But we didn't have the land in play yet. Um, oh, do I have to slow tap all this? I do. God, that's killer. Oh, I should have gained control of this one, actually. Alright, so we want to target ourselves. Ah, oh, I was hoping for the Emmy. I mean, I'll take a Grizzled Dad. Oh, did I accidentally click through my attack phase? When did we do that? Were we just not paying attention? Was I not paying attention? I mean, we'll still draw a seven, but was I just not paying attention? Actually, no, no, no. In the case of Grizzlebrand, it's 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 not the end of the world, simply because um, the and the only reason is because it's this. If that was a Gorios, that would have been a huge, huge mistake. This is only not optimal. It still plays like because uh, entering says you get to keep the creature. You don't exile it. But yes, I was supposed to. I don't know why. Why am I in second main there? Did I just click through my first main? Okay. So we can use Spe uh, Spirit Guide to charge the brain. And I think we want to do that before next turn because we're discarding down. Yes. And let's, let's just cast a looting here for value. Kind of sculpt their hand a little bit. Don't want to black cleave cliffs for sure. Don't think we need the mire. Okay. I mean, it sucks. It sucks. I didn't realize what phase we were in, but yeah, so we missed a swing there. I think it's still going to be fine. I think. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know many decks that are going to be able to handle. Well, if he has a remand. Okay, the nuts for my opponent would be that he has path remand, not mana leak. It needs to be. Path for Grizzlebrand and then remand for the Beck Call. And that looks like that's not what he's going to have. So now here comes the birds. I think the cool thing about the Grizzlebrand's deck is the multiple angles. So let me pull up the deck list for you guys so you can see kind of what's going on in this Wombo Combo. Now keep in mind, this is just my take on the deck. Uh, it's just a prototype. I'm not sure exactly what the optimal build's going to look like in the end, but it's uh, it's interesting. It can it, 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 it can hit like a Grishel brand, but it doesn't have the, the infinite Wumble combo, but it's just got this value engine. And these are your enablers. You've got Vengeance, Brain, Expertise. Out of the board, it's trying to be like a Blood Moon deck slash you can use a Henny's or Through the Breach. Because the issue with Kari Zevs is against a removal heavy deck, they're going to kill whatever it is you targeted. Um, so he does have the path, that's what I was worried about. We're not going to draw again, obviously, because we would die. But 
I think the bird army is gonna get us there. I'm a little disappointed in myself, because he'd be at uh, 12. Oh, you know what? I meant to Orchard to draw an additional card. Well, we still can. The, the back is in effect right now. Uh, if we wanted to, we could Orchard to draw more cards here. We need to be careful that we don't get too carried away, though, because these spirits will attack us. <laughs> But um, I, I like the prospect of drawing more cards. So we're going to do that. And we hit Akari Zebs. Okay. So I can have more birds. You guys want more birds, right? I think I do. I think I want more birds. This is just going to get out of control. <laughs> oh, my sweet lord. Yes. So we're drawing two cards for each bird right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Oh, let's... I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe you guys aren't saying anything. This is insane. We're going to draw three cards for each of these. So I actually maybe want to turn off some of these. Especially since we just hit a breaking entering. I should maybe say no to some of these, right? Because I just used all my simians. We should say no to some of these, right? What's my storm count? This is cool! I, we just drew the whole deck and it wasn't Grishelbrand combo. If I wanted to, we could draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It doesn't deck us. Vitamin Tuna says don't. Oh, but I just want to draw the whole deck! Just deck yourself, it'll be great. Yeah, it's practice room. Let's just do it. It's practice room. That's what the practice room is for, is drawing your whole deck. <laughs> More cards! <laughs> oh, jeez. My hand is 29. Alright, alright. So we'll bend the grizzles. That's easy. Some lands. I don't need that many brand in a jar. We'll be using that many vengeances. We'll keep two vengeance. And maybe keep a looting. So our hand's gonna be four Emrakuls. Actually, I, I don't think I want to have any of the brains. One, two, three. Let's keep that swamp. So our hand's going to be four Emmys. Gorios. I actually don't want this either, do I? Well, yeah, there's no point in this anymore. I think we just want our hand to be this. Yeah. Because you want to hit him with the Emrakul, we do. We'll watch him have the remand now, you know. I should have kept two Gorios, by the way. The the correct hand was two Gorios, Swamp. No, we didn't need the Swamp. It, the perfect hand, the best hand we could have come up with here was four Emrakul, two Gorios, one Faithless Looting. Actually, I didn't even need the Faithless Looting because we have a Neonit in play. So... Maybe we'll draw a second one? No. So we need to be careful. I actually can't use the looting because we're at one. 
I have to use the neonate. Well, I guess we don't care about the remand. What am I saying? We have plenty of mana to pay for it. That's a lot of draw power, guys. I, I don't think we're going to get another draw like... <laughs> Okay, he's gonna have like a million rest in peace now. Alright, uh, he, his mana didn't look that greedy. I don't think we're supposed to moon him, but maybe we should try. This deck just does all the mean things. I don't think I could play this deck in paper. I, I just, I don't think I could. I, I feel like I'd feel so, like, such an awful being the whole time, you know? I was doing it. I think we should go full transformational cyber because Kari Zeb's expertise is gonna be much worse if he's got more removal to counteract it. Also, uh, he might be destroying our brains. I mean, we might just want to switch gears and become a breach deck. The issue is we don't do these as well. I don't know if that's right. I like the fact that this doesn't have to target a creature to combo these off, though. You know? Well, if he rest in pieces us, then these don't work at all. Why don't we trim on those? Do something like this. Actually, I think the first brain's fine. If he has removal for it, it's like, alright, well, at least I don't have a bunch of others. So that's, um, three, that's a three, three to four split. Three to four split's fine, yes? Or is that, do we want to do it the other way? Do you want to do four to three split? Actually, I think the four to three, uh, excuse me, I think the four to three split's going to be cleaner, actually. Blood Moon would be fine. Yeah. Especially when one of those two colors isn't red. Let me see how we're curving. We got fours. Fives. Twos. This is kind of how we curve now. These all are kind of like, you're not hard casting these, so these are just chilling. More enablers over combo pieces? Yeah, okay. So four to three split. Yeah. More enablers than pieces. I think I think Brain's really underestimated because even if you stall on this card, you can still scry with it. I mean, we we were playing in this. Remember, uh, we had like a, a Jeskai Nahiri that was like a bird brain deck, and um, it was it was. I just kept this hand because it was a fast blood move. That's terrible of me. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like mulliganing to like freaking you know blood. Uh, excuse me, uh, rest in pieces. Or we just win. All right, so there you go. Um, I got to show you real rocks before you go to sleep. Excuse me, the Grizzle Brains deck. I'll link this in chat if you guys want to play it. It's a blast, a blast. You guys are welcome to play it. Doing all sorts of degenerate nonsense, like drawing the whole thing. We drew the whole triple. Well, our first, our first or second Beck call led to like triple spirit guide, and then a triple spirit guided into a Kari Zevs into another Beck, and then it's just it's crazy. It's nine forty here. Uh oh, I want one more match with this. Well, I was gonna finish the the gifts though, League, and then that way next time real rocks I can actually play. Um, we could actually play Grizzle Brains. In a league. Which I think would be sweet. Um, I don't want to talk so much uh, uh, about the game wisp, but I do want to talk about some of the other features. I've updated a lot of stuff. Uh, we've got new music. I think this is going to be better. I also think it's going to solve my issue because it's not iTunes, it's Amazon. So I'm hoping that the new music doesn't get muted on the video playback, so I'm going to test that and see if that works. Also, I redid the uh, the panels. Um, seems fine. Yeah, I keep this. 
I just want more content. Well, keep in mind it's three forty in the morning, and I I, I got uh, stuff going on tomorrow, real. So I, I think I might actually. I may be up for one more game of Grizzle Brains after this, but oh man, is he burn? And we just have the ley line. Oh no. Oh man, is that really what just happened? Did we do it? Did we run into another burn player? Oh, I hope so. I don't even think we need this. I mean, we kind of have everything we need to, to take the match already. We have three lands and a carry tid. We technically don't even need the bird. Hope you have opening hand leyline against Rack. Oh no, he's living in. Shoot. <laughs> Crap. A worship still can trump. Uh, well, eh. uh oh, I don't know how this is gonna go. Does our game plan change? It has to, right? Because he's yeah. Worry about beast then? Yes. True. Beast within on the warship is a thing. Oh, well, he's missing land drops. He should be cycling now if he's missing a land. What are you doing, opponent? We don't even have to worship. I could just go for the gifts and just shut him off of um, black. I wish we could go for green. The benefit of, of Iona on green is that he can't beast within her, but that only shuts off half of his Cascade enablers. We do have Iona in the main. So, te technically Iona on green shuts off most of his deck, but it wouldn't shut off the Dread Return into Living End. So, but that would shut off the beast within, but... I mean, they don't usually run a play set of beast in the main. It's usually like two to three. Black black is better, yes, but there's the potential for him to just beast the uh, the Iona. It's just, what do you want to play around? Do you want to play around a three of or a four of? Probably should play around the four of. So Iona on black plays around a four of, well, an eight of, versus... Um, Iona on green plays around. Well, Iona on green plays around a seven. But yes, we should we should still go for the uh, the other. I know Smash. Yeah. Oh well. He, yeah, he's also got Shriek Maw. He's just shown us. So I, I think it just has to be black because that would make it a nine or above. If he's got things like Shriek Maw in the main, then it's like there's even more black cards that we care about. So. Right, let's get him in three. We do not need Leyline against Living End. These are coming out. That was kind of my. I think that was the major criticism I had for his for the for, for his deck was was the ley lines in the main. But he he had some justification for it. You know, he was like, well, you know, I think he was said something about like his meta game and. It's actually should have been a white source, I think. I mean, we have a white source here, so... I don't think I should show him the worship. Yes, I would love some free information. Alright, so he does have double beast within. So he's actually just one land away from Beast with hitting our Iona. That's rough. Wish I could Emrakul, because then I could make him exile his Spirit Guide. And then he'd be much further away.
Guess I will play the worship then. I guess the nice thing I can say is if he's if he's playing a lamb, some spirit guiding into the beast within he still has to find another mana source to go off, and we'll have a 3-3 we can beat him down with for a little bit. And, I mean, Iona going to the graveyard, that's creature, so we've got sorcery, instant land, creature. Makes the Amrakul cool a little cheaper. Oh, you're right, Savik. I was supposed to take the guide. I, I only realized it, though, in hindsight, unfortunately. Um... It, it wasn't just much better, it actually would have been... Um, actually, maybe I should hold the Noble. It, it actually wasn't just a little bit better, it was amazingly better. It was... If, we, if we'd taken Simeon there, actually, we probably just won. But Ariana's going to come back on living again, and then we get to hit him. Uh, true. Invoke Sheik Maul. Maybe I should have played the Noble, because then we'd still have a clock. These are legendary. That's also something I changed in his build. Do not like having two of legendary lands. I really don't. Unless it's absolutely necessary, I don't like doing it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need to get to nine, though. I guess we do play the Noble, right? Because that lets me go to... Because think about it this way. If, if he doesn't have the land again, we definitely want the Emrakul to happen, right? Yes? Yes. Is this the way we can finish him? Although playing Noble gives him a target for the Dread Return. So maybe that's a mistake. But I mean, I feel like us getting Iona back should be... Because he doesn't have enough Deadshot Minotaurs to kill her, right? I don't think he has anything with Reach, either. Should have looked into that first. Oh, he's just going to play the Fulminator? Okay. Well, regardless, he has a target for his... Sponsor says, no, this isn't going to work. He has Shriek Maws in the yard. Ah! That's true. <clears throat> She's not good enough. You're right. Or she won't be good enough here. Well, couldn't I just Emrakul him and just make him blow up his own land? He didn't see this coming. Okay, so nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, are we really just one short here? Oh man, I think we are one short. Yep, cost nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh man. Oh, that's frustrating. Just one short. Do we guy reach hoping for the um, the unburial rights? I think we do. There's a chance we spike it. Decay does not really help me here. Does not help us. I mean, we could have been to Emrakul there, but he has double Shriek Maw, so it wouldn't matter.
Spencer says he should have been the worship to make the Emmy cheaper. Uh, yes. Well, you know what? I can actually, I could, I could decay my Karyatid so that comes back and turns on the worship. Because she's hexproof. It's, it's hexproof. And then that maybe buys us enough time to do the Emrakul. But yes, I should have been the worship. I mean, we, we still could do that play in the future. Like, we just need to lock in this carry did. So we can we have to make this worship matter. Oh, you know what? We didn't know if he had. We didn't see if he had the other. Um, the other uh, enabler for living end. Yeah, we did not see if he had. I mean, we looked at his hand a long time ago with this Inquisition. The Cascader we saw they had was demonic, and here there wasn't a creature. But I guess he would have just kept the Fulminator around, but maybe we could have sniped our... There's a world where maybe it was correct for us to decay the higher. that's all I'm thinking about. Sorry, I try to do my best to let you guys know what, what I'm thinking. Alright, so let's do the other line I was proposing, which was nuke our own carry to Might as well tap that way. Six here. I mean, keep in mind he's already spent two beast events. He doesn't have many other ways to remove this worship. I mean, and we even have a second worship. So I don't think. I feel like we'll be able to stonewall long enough to eventually set up. Um, bringing back Iona, or like in some ways, it seems like we're losing, but that's not the case. Thanks to this, I, I feel I feel strongly about that. I think I think although we were talking about bidding the worship to make the Emrakul cheaper, I'd rather just have the the second one so that you know even if he finds the third beast, then there, there likely isn't a fourth. It's not likely. Likely. Also, none of these handle flyers, so if we can just get the Emrakul out, it's just game anyways. None of these block uh, flyer. So we're looking at, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is still nine. Yeah, I hope you guys like the, um, the changes I've made. I'm not even going to call them changes. I would say improvements. Like, I really did spend some serious time uh, between the last stream and this stream adding some new stuff. Hope you guys like the new... I've been meaning to... So the one that was made for us, the one that somebody made for us, they made that for us. It was either myself or... or no, he does have a reach. Yeah, you're right, Cosfiend. He does have a reach creature. Actually, that might be a mistake, because he might have the, um... Shoot, he does. Yeah, he has the Anthem effect. That was him trying to cast it. So we need to keep that information in mind. If we had Urborg, that would be relevant. I actually didn't need to play that. <laughs> Layout is indeed different, Full Metal. So we're looking at we're looking at we are too short. Okay. I'm not gonna block again because if he has a simian spirit guy, that's a sneaky way for him to win. I mean, we don't need to block again. 
I mean, do we want to be guy reaching to hit our win con sooner, or do we not want to help filter the opponent's draws? I mean, again, like outside of more beast within, there's really little he can do. I guess it doesn't really matter if we accelerate the draws then in that case, because we're more likely to hit what we need versus him doing so. I'm always worried, though, about using stuff like symmetrical effects like this against decks. You know, of course, Dredge, but Live Again included. Dead Shot Minotaur. Now, but see where we're bidding a mana source. But we could have just drawn the naturally to get to this guy. Now we need to be careful, like the way he turns this around is um, is something like he living ends and then he living ends again and then we don't get to have a creature in play for the worship. If I can get a carry to into the graveyard that's game though. Shoot, SJ, maybe I should have done that. True. If I just discarded one instead. That was probably better. So there's a Gifts. Oh, well, Gifts, gifts could put the Sylvan carry to into the graveyard in response. So actually, we can do that now. So go. This Jay says block. Oh, yeah, block the Monstrous. That would put a carry to in the graveyard, too. I mean, we want to do more than just get carried to in the yard, though. I mean, we, we want to also win. That's I think that's... Definitely the complaint I have with... Okay. Alright, so now we got a carry to in the yard and one in play. So that's essentially the hard lock, right? Two worships probably doesn't have four beasts within the main. So we're going to gifts here. I think the only way we can die here is if I accidentally click my polluted delta because it's magic online. So there's there is a there is a real potential that I die just from a misclick. Uh, so what are the things that we want? Um, I mean, Elish is good. We want on burial rights for sure. Um, Yeah, we want the other unburial right, um, um, rights, and we want the Elish. Here's the thing: like we're we're at a high amount of mana. One, two, three, four, five. Well, okay, no. Uh, I was thinking of doing a greedier pile. I think it's just Elish unburial. Kaz says list, exclamation mark deck. You want exclamation mark deck. Exclamation mark deckless is the old command. People, I don't know, just decks quicker to type. So we switched it. I think that's the one, Kaz. Let me see. No, that's the Mardudu. That was the other deck we were playing. Hang on. Let me get it for you. So the version we're playing right now is this one, the 1.0. We've we've since actually this is not the 1.0. This is Lingering Souls. Well, this is this is going to be the closest thing to it. Car, uh, card for card, this is going to be closest because this is the version that still had the main deck leyline, which I don't necessarily agree with. Agree with. Yeah, it's the Mardudu list. There you go. Alright, so... Um, 
I, I don't think we can get too fancy. I mean, is there is there a better? Hmm. The issue is if we go for the Elish, he likely just loops his um, loops his living end again. We can't afford to though. If he loops living end, he doesn't have the shriek moss this time. The Iona sticks. So actually, that's fine. If we force him, if we force him to living end. He has to living end again, but then he's just looping my girls. Like, he can't handle the board of either Elish or Iona, you know? I don't think. Especially with there being birds. Yeah, he can't. He, w he won't be able to handle both the girls. Thank you for sure, Subby. Next time, love the series. Yeah, definitely don't worry about it tonight because I'm going to bed soon. I think the cool thing about the... the, the um, the perks that I'm offering Kaz are that it, it's going to be hands-on. I'm going to do it immediately. I, ideally, I want to start working on uh, the deck list you guys drop. Actually, am I supposed to get the Iona? Ooh. Because if I go for the Iona, he's forced to living in response, actually. What do you guys think? Is it Iona here? I don't want to spend too much more time because we're down three minutes now. Is it Iona, and then in response he's probably going to living end, but then we get the Elish Norn, and he, and the Elish Norn won't die to the Shriek Maws. Go for the Iona, okay. So we're going to go for the Iona, and my 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 guess is that he's going to in response go for his combo. Okay, we have a fun brew for you to do. Oh, okay, that works. All right, these are out. <laughs> these don't do anything. Um, my hand hate is okay. Y you know what's funny is Living End is one of the decks that draws the best in the format because like the whole deck outside of the combo pieces can trip. They all cycle. Um, I feel like we need all our threats for this. Um, Remand is fantastic in this match. I wish we had two. Later versions of this would have two. Um, just interacting with his comps is where we want to be. I don't think damnation is good enough. I think it's just that's a um, leyline isn't useful here either. I think that's just a um, yeah. I mean the worship was good. Some counter magic will be good. I mean I guess we could just run the two thought seizes. Don't really want to besage you. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's like one-on-one, -on -one, those cause. So when you do submit it, it's great if you're there. I, I actually, I'm planning to, so I, I actually have a list. It's not that long of a list, so you'd be getting your deck list in at a good time because the list hasn't, um, it's not huge yet. I, I have four decks lists I still need to fulfill. So, you know, sooner, sooner the better. That gives me time to look at it. And... That also opens up the window for times that I can stream, that I can also meet you online, and we can we can, you know, meet up and because I, I want to do it like a I want to do it live, if it makes sense. So this hand has the worship. The worship seems pretty integral to what we're doing, because I mean his deck's faster than ours, you know. I also think that we really can't in good conscience throw away a hand that has the mana dork. Yeah, exactly, Balls McGee. The, the, that's the cool part, is like, it's not just me and you. It's also everybody else who's in the chat. We can all uh, work together and brew something. And I think what I was trying to say earlier... I actually think I'm going to mulligan this. What I was trying to... Yeah, this is better. What I was trying to mention earlier is that I actually take uh, a hit. Some, you know, somebody somebody mentioned, like, oh, like, Bruce Spy's trying to get into the sub scene. He's just trying to make money. No. Because when I take the deck list that we make to a league, it's 10 tickets. <laughs> it's 10 tickets! And I think that's the uh, that's the friendly league. I think the competitive is more. But I, I know competitive is 120 points, for sure. I don't remember if it's 10 or 12 off the top of my head. But it's it's more or less 10 tickets. A sub is only f uh, 4.99. It's the same price as a Twitch sub. So I'm actually handling the rest of the cost. So 
it's I'm trying I'm trying to work with you guys. This is something we've wanted for the stream for a long time. So um, I thought making it because I, I, I was speaking to some of my mods about it and some some friends of the stream about it and they're like yeah well why don't you just charge ten because uh, it's not like a Twitch you know uh, partner to choose your price the uh, the um, these guys that do this the um, Game Wisp guys so I, I could have set it to ten I was like no 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 I want it to I want it to be the same uh, amount of money as a Twitch sub how's it going boot to the head how are you my friend. So, I don't think I'm supposed to lead Inquisition. I think I am still supposed to lead Bird. Lead out Bird. I also think it might be correct for me to go Breeding Pool, but painful. Awesome, been working on a brew. Haven't figured out the mana base. Oh, well, we'd be happy to help you smooth it out, Kaz. I'm not going to claim that I'm the best at mana bases, but I've played with a lot of different mana bases. So I bet between you, myself, and everybody else here, I'm, pr I'm sure we could smooth things out. What are we talking about? Um, I was just talking about the... Um... Ooh, okay. I was just talking about the changes. That sucks. So am I carry titting, or am I inquisitioning and ancestraling? I think I'm going to do... I think I'm going to do that. Or maybe I'm going to see your visions. Oof. Double Fulminator is rough. I'll take one of them, I guess. Actually, you know what? He's, um... He's living in... He's eventually going to get to Fulminate us. The beast... Hitting the beast with him might be more relevant. Because if we hit uh, a warship... That's a tough call. Double Fulminator is brutal. But I think between the land I already have, these cantrips, and the carry that I think we'll manage... I'll take a... Actually, I'm going to take a Fulminator. All right. Uh, Man, Goody says... Uh, Jim... Okay, Jim Davis. How did you get the game display at the bottom, says Kaz? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a feature through MTG Bot. Damn Bopes. I'd be happy to show you how to do that. Oh, you know what is not showing up? Thank you for reminding me. The donation goal is not showing up. Thank you for saying something. There we go. Uh, the GP Vegas fund. So, yes. You would have taken Beast, though? You may very well be right, man. That's what I'm supposed to do. Well, so here's the thing. Boot says... I believe it's 10 for a match, 50 for a league, 5 for a deck tech. Balls McGee says Jim does 50 for a league. But but it's different. It's 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 Jim Davis. You know, I'm not I'm not famous in the in the paper magic community, so I'm I'm sure there's you're taking the new layout. Thanks, Boot to the head. Yeah, I changed I switched things up. Did you see the new um Oh geez, that's really bad for us. I actually should have gone Seer Visions. Okay, well, that's not so bad. So I could I could Temple Garden into Sylvan. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. That's really all I can do. Can't vision anymore. Oh, Jim's pricing. Yeah, no, I mean again, like like Jim Jim is famous in the paper community, so I don't think it's unreasonable for him to charge fifty for a league. Like it's it's not only paying for the league, so go ahead and trim ten off the top, right? Because that's going towards the league. And then, he, so he's only really making a forty dollar donation on those, but a lead can take anywhere between, you know, an hour and a half to two hours. So I, I don't, I don't think that's wrong. I think that for now, though, I like, I like, I like the the prices that I've worked out here. I don't, I don't think it's wrong, you know, because oh, you know what? I could guy reach, I could guy reach the Elish Norn. Oh man! Oh, but he's got a Shriek Maw. Man. Still think I'm supposed to do this. Cause I can just unburial rights are back. So I mean him going for the beast with him means he's going for it now. 
So what's the end result going to be? The end result will be, unfortunately, Birds of Paradise Elish. He'll kill the Elish with the Shriek Maw. So we're going to have a, a bird. But yeah, SJ, man, I think I think I think we should have hit the uh, the beast within. I think he's gonna do it right here if he's got the instant speed one. All right, hang on a second. So with gifts, that changes things. We can put a carry to in the yard. Well, okay, that doesn't really matter so much because we don't have the worship in play. My bird will die? My bird will die to the Minotaur. Shoot. I didn't see that. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, we're still going to give some response. I guess we could give for Iona and Emrakul. That might be good enough. Oops. Blue, please. Fast tap the rest of those. Gift up the big guys. So you're thinking just Iona and Elish? I mean, excuse me, Iona and Emrakul? I think, I think... He can only kill one of them. Well, let's see. What am I supposed to name here? Still Block? Or do you name Green? For Beasts? I think naming Black forces him to have to hit the Iona, though, right? I mean, the Elish is nice because it takes care of the, the Shriek Maw and the Fulminators. So he, it, since that's state-based, we don't have to lose the... Oh, okay, so he's... He's... Shrieking, Emrakul, Killing Bird. Nah, we got this. Yeah. He can't beat the girls. Red or green, I think. Oh, really? Alright, Butadad says, we get more stream interactions, plus online events, giveaways, sponsors. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that's certainly something we could do in the future. I don't know about giveaways. Giveaways are kind of... I don't know. I like doing charities. Uh, one of the problems we ran across was charging too little, then you never had time for anything else. Well, maybe it's okay at first. I mean, I, I'd hate to change price, price, prices, Ch change the. I would hate to change. These can't walk anyway. Excuse me, no, they can. Am I thinking of a different creature? No, this just they attack every turn. So attacking with Elish would be uh, not so great, right? Because this is one, two, three, four, five, six damage. Oh, well, no. We can attack with Elish. I was just deciding whether or not we should play the, the Noble. I think actually a better play is uh, holding the gifts. Because there's one more in Barrel Rights in the deck. I think I just swing. I think it's swing, swing. Maybe he'll chump Elish. He can't, he can't block and kill her. He's only got six power. Right, exactly. I, I'd rather my sponsors handle, like, you know, giveaways or whatever, or, like, stuff you can buy. Like, for example, I am actually, I don't know if you guys realize this because of the vest, I am wearing the Card Hoarder t-shirt. The other one. I wore the black one last stream. This stream I'm sporting, and I can show you. This stream I'm sporting the white one. I like the black one more, but that's not to say the white one's... I had a chip on my chest. <laughs> it's random. All right, hang on, I'll show you this one. So this is the the other version of the card order shirt. It is a different design. You can see on the bottom it's got card order. This is really nice material. I think it was really cool that they gave their streamers free shirts. Uh, but they're, I don't know if it pays for shipping, but I know the shirts themselves are 20. It's really comfy and it supports them. Doesn't help me at all. It just I just thought, you know. Well like that's like the time I got the card hoarder bow tie. I told you guys about that too. And that was cool. I still have them. 
I have one for me, and then I have one that I might give away at some point. So there, there's a giveaway idea. The extra card hoarder bow tie. The second one. It is a nice shirt, booted head. It's really soft. And it actually fits. Which is rare. Usually, usually t-shirts don't fit me just right. So it's always nice when you get, get a good t-shirt. Yeah, I worked a class today. There's nothing, there's nothing nerdier than showing up to your uh, thermal applications class with a dragon shirt, right? Yeah, no, it's a cool shirt. I tell you what, I, like I said, I prefer the black one, but the white one's nice too. Still waiting on these guys to send in a deck list, but I'm caught up on pretty much everything. These guys haven't submitted their uh, bot yet. Anyway. I was hoping Ike would be here, because I did his... Uh, yeah, so these are the designs. So that's the black one. See, so it is a different dragon. Whoa. Well, there you go. How much will you be sticking to the schedule below? The two... The Tuesday and the... So, let me actually make an edit here so you guys can know for sure what the dealio is. Tuesdays and Thursdays are hit or miss. I may be able to sometimes... I, hang on a second, wrong button. Tuesdays... Here we go. Tuesdays and Thursdays are tentative. I may not be able to do... So we get to eat one of these up. Yeah, you guys definitely should do some merch boot to the head. I know a couple good websites. Let me show you the website that I made the card hoarder bow tie on, or designed it on. Um, I didn't make it, they, their designers make it. I could give you a good website boot to the head. Remind me, or message me after the stream. I'll be up a little bit longer. Okay, so he's going to beast the Iona. Okay. He's still in a rough position from this Elish, though, is he not? Just do the worship. Uh, yeah, Mangudi. I, I think what I was pleasantly surprised about the most was the softness. And that's weird. Maybe as as a guy to keep talking about that particular aspect of the shirt, but that's just it's just, just really nice. It's like most shirts I have just don't have that. Like you put it on, you're like, whoa, this is this is soft. Like it's not that's not normally a sensation I have when I put a t-shirt on. I just put a t-shirt on. You know, it's not like the first thing that pops into my head. Like, oh man, this is this is soft. Anyway, I think we just worship, right? Yes. Could be worship, could be just hold up gifts. I think I'm gonna worship. I feel like the worship just puts puts a lock on things. Oh wow, there is not another white source. Hmm. What am I saying? I have white sources, I just need a blue source. That's what's up. <laughs> Where are my white sources? It's a blue source that I needed. Ball says, why not running Gorios and Grizzles? You could. Uh, I've played Gorios gifts before. Go Go Gorios gifts. We've played Go Go Goto gifts. Go Go Gorios gifts. Now the Go Go gadget came from the Gorios build. Um, so, oh hey, the four one happened. Nice. We got some uh, Aether Revolt packs. We have new product. You guys want to open some chests, and then we can call it a night. It's always fun opening chests with you guys. I don't like doing it by my lonesome, but I actually save them to open them on stream. Yeah, thanks, Boot to the Head. But yeah, remind me. Remind me. Link them to you? Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, I can do it. You want me to send you... What was it? Uh, it's called... It's called The Studio. Democracy. It's really cool. It's how I did some of the merch. The Studio. Got it. This is what you want. 
for making your own merch for the rogues. This is what I was going to suggest to TJ if we ever if we ever talked merch. Yeah, so it's the Studio of Democracy. So basically, you can do everything from cufflinks to nice shirts to to bow ties to ties to hoodies, whatever. Um, and um, they they make it. It's really that simple. Really cool. I'm not. Su I'm surprised it's not more popular. It says filter by product, so you can kind of see. Well, I'll, I'll I'll link this to you, Boot. And you set your own prices. We had a few people buy the uh, the the bow ties, and honestly, I was doing this just so I could have the bow ties. But we had a few people actually uh, buy into it, which is neat. So somewhere out there in the world, there are more car hoarder bow ties. Let's see. All right, so let's open. I just hope that either revolt aren't worth trash, but we're, we're fine. Like I have enough to support at least the next few deck techs and. Um, all right, chess, right? Chests, yes. Do we jam these chests wide open? What do you guys think? We do have emotes enabled for this stream. Go, 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 sneak in some grizzle. Let's open one chest first. Uh, I can play one more grizzle brain game. Oh man, we got some points? Oh man. Guys. Guys, we got some Monopoly fun money. I mean, come on. I'm in the sell camp. We, we really should sell them, by the way. <laughs> it's fun to open some. Alright, let's play another Reigns game and then I'm going to call it a night. Real. By the way, Real Rocks, when are you going to subscribe? When are you subscribing? When are you subscribing? We'll have to let the boring know that his gifts list ended up going 4 1. Have to thank him for that. He was joking about it. He was like, yeah, man, like if the deck tanks, I'm going to donate you. I'll be like, well, now you don't have to. <laughs> you know? Uh, I think we're supposed to keep it. This is really not good, but we're keeping it. Stop. We're not cracking that blood stain. We need the, we need the lands. Issue with this card is as expertise. We need a creature. We either need a creature or the opponent needs to play one for us. Please play it, dude. What did you play? What, 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 what play did you make? What the f... Where is this bird? What? What the... Oh, it's on the stack. Okay. Sorry, I had my auto yields on. Or my, my, um... I didn't have my yields on. And the card was down here. That just means I'm exhausted, real. If I can't even, I'm losing it, man. I'm losing it. I am running Gorios in this, yeah. This is. Uh, let me show you the list. He didn't see it. It's uh, it's Grizzle Brains, so it's like Gorios, Brain in a Jar for the Wombo Combo pieces. Sorry. Kari Zev's expertise, Gorios, Brain, and then the sideboard we have Breaches. And expertise. And I guess Moon. Moon's a way to win some matches. Pride Mage. Promo Pride Mage. Get in get in with that bird. Oh man, the value. Are we supposed to crack both of these though? That is technically thinning us. I really do want to draw that third land. Aha! That counts. We can go basic, basic. It's not going to hurt us too much. Because we got red, red. So let's see, we're going basic, basic. Kari Zevs. Doesn't really matter our target here because he can't sack the Pride Mage. But that would, if our only target was Pride Mage and he had open mana, he could fizzle this. And that's the biggest issue with the Kari Zevs in the main deck. It's 
the fastest expertise, but it's also one of the most. It's it is the most vulnerable expertise. It's one. Of, it's the fastest one, but it's also the most vulnerable to uh, sacrifice effects or spot removal or you know any sort of you know way that they they, they could fizzle. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, so what makes it better than the normal Gorio Breach build? Why are you running Breach in the side? Would it be better if you didn't need it? Um, Breach is in the side for when people have Graveyard Hate and Artifact Hate real. Because uh, inevitably, those are the things... That are, if, they, if they lost to the Brain in a Jar Wombo comboing them with these pieces, they're going to bring in some Artifact Hate, right? So it's nice to be able to take this out and swap it for the Breaches. Or if the way that they lost was the Graveyard... I mean... I'll, Odds are they're going to try to hit our graveyard interactions anyways. So being able to take these out and then have access to these or even just more expertise as I was testing a couple more expertise. Like having different enablers is actually huge. And one of the reasons that Grizzle, Bran, Wampo Combo Dex, and Modern, they do well, but they only do so well because they're kind of a, I wouldn't say one trick pony, but your opponent, your opponent is able to, if they have the right sideboard, hate on what you're doing. This deck has so many angles thanks to the birds and the expertises now. Uh, Bre Breach is just another angle. It's just, as a combo player, uh, certainly I play a lot of combo in Legacy as well, it's nice to have angles. It's nice to be able to sideboard into different angles. Your opponent boards one way, they're like, oh, I'm going to attack his graveyard. We're like, okay, let's bring in Breaches. Or, you know, they bring in some artifact hate, it's like we took out the brains. You know, they're not there anymore, they have dead cards. Linear is the word I'm looking for. Sure, I mean, yeah, we don't we don't want to be linear. We don't want to we don't want to only have one angle when we could have several. Um, or just we could just blood moon them and then beat them down with Simeon spear guides. You know, we got options. Does it make sense so real? I mean, there's merit to just being stock Grishelbrand or stock, uh, you know, Fury of the Horde or just just stock, you know, um, so many angles. Gorio's Breach. There's nothing wrong with the, the stock Gorio's Breach. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a fine deck. I'm not trying to make an argument that this is better. I think this is more interesting to play because it's got more angles. That also makes... Like, the thing is, um, the first... One of the first... Um, ooh. Naturally discarding the Emrakul is rough. Let's see. End step. Next turn, if we don't draw a discard enabler, we go for the end step Emmy. I think he would still stick to the board, would he not? Oh, uh, yeah. Fiery Justice. Oh, I'm sure he has it if he has Grove in this thing. I'm sure he does. Can't you just discard Emrakul and Vengeance it? That's what I'm thinking. And I think since it's already in the end step, it won't get exiled. Kind of like the same principle with Breach. How players will Breach during the end step. And then it won't exile till the next end step. So I think the wording works there. Yeah. I mean, that's a play sometimes I'll make with the, the Tinfins list I have. You, although I'll usually do it during their end step, not my end step. I think it works. I think it does. That's probably the most awkward play, but it is a play. He's at 14. And Emrakul certainly has to be blocked. Is he going to gap any? Ooh. Swag Tusk. Never mind. Back up to 19. It will be a blocker, Killer B. All right, uh, Bruce, uh, playing the Walker's List with a split. Two deploy, two doubling season. Uh, 
I'm suggesting that a lot of people it might just be better to double down either. I went into deploy for fun. I'm not sure, Balls McGee. I've seen doubling season Wombo Combo with Jace. I've seen that be very effective, actually. Kaz says it will go away on his end step. So then there's no point in doing it. Okay. Well, I'm glad we clarified that. Yeah, so if there's no... If there's no point... Right, it would go away on his end step before we get to attack with it. That's why the breach play works, but this, this play would not work. Okay. Right. So that's why that trick, things like Vengeance or Breach, have to be done during the opponent's end phase, not ours. Mm -hmm. It's whatever the next end step would be. I mean, is there a chance we could get into a board state where we could spike him with stealing his Thraktusk and attacking with it? No. Because he's got the wall. He's got plenty of blockers. Chibi Vegas is in June. So we have until June to raise the funds. Uh, Blackstar. Or at least get as close as possible to that goal. The sad... Oop, there it is. Sweet. The, or the disappointing thing I should say is... Um, is that... The disappointing thing is that... Um, yeah, we got there. Most likely. Most likely. Um, yeah, the disappointing thing is is that that um, Black Star, that goal is actually just the price of getting to be part of the house group that I, I've got a spot with. So me getting to Vegas is another story. I was considering road tripping. I have some family, or, well, friends. I have family in California, but I have friends in the Midwest, so I was thinking of literally road tripping it. The last time I did a magic road trip was GP Columbus. That was a lot of fun. I got to meet some of you guys at, at the GP. So... I'll have to figure out how I get there. But that that was the, the, the reason it's such a specific number is that was the price. The 525 was the price of getting to stay in the... They, they're renting a house. Uh, what's this? Resto Angel? Resto Tusk? That's pretty good value. I mean, he's certainly got more permanence uh, than we're going to get to Annihilate. So, I mean, us assuming that it's a game win is not correct. Um, so, we're, we're going to need to hang back on some of these birds, actually, I think. There's another insulin unit. So should we keep one bird back for blocks, or what? I think we'll play it safe. We can, like, block sacrifice the neonate. neonate. And the neonate is in the deck because it's Akari Zev's expertise. Like, orchards are here for, for an enabler. Neonates are here for enabler. Te if you want to get technical, the spirit guides in a pinch could be used as enabler as an enabler for this if the opponent doesn't have creatures for us to target. Should keep multiple back just in case he has paths. Uh, true. Or a fire. I mean, a fiery justice would win, right? I think fiery. Well, but we would gain five life. Cool thing about fiery justice, though, I think it is split between creatures and or players. So that's that's something that people don't always think about with Fiery Justice is 
It's certainly a fun fun card to to, to brew around. It's um, fire justice. It's powerful effect. Yeah, so he's gonna leave himself with the angel. Okay. See whether or not he wants to. So he doesn't want to chop the enemy. He just wants to take the hit. Oh uh, no! This doesn't need a sack outlet for the jars. Uh, say, say hokey. Th this version of Brain and Jar actually doesn't need a sacrifice engine. Uh, partly because um, we're not trying to cast zero mana spells with it. While that's true, that that makes it three pieces, though, Sahoke. It's something that we tried in some of the... Like, we tried to make a Restore Balance deck using Brain a Jar and Expertises. It works, real. So, what Sahoke is proposing is you tap the Brain a Jar that already has two charge counters on it, if you bounce or sacrifice the brain, it'll check the last known state of the brain in a jar, which was indeed two charge counters, which would indeed let me choose to fuse a CMC uh, two fuse spell. It's the same reason that we're able to cast zero mana spells like Restore Balance or Ancestor or Living End, um, or I guess Wheel, uh, with, um, with brain in a jar. If it's on zero charge counters, you go to tap it, you either bounce or sacrifice it or other, you know, phase it out somehow make it leave the board state um, while the trigger was on the stack. Okay, so what's awkward here is he's obviously got something. I think I'm going to block Sacrifice. Jeez, the fourth Goryos does not help me here. Real says I would have chumped with Bird. You think I should have saved the Neonate just in case next turn we hit a reanimate target? That's true. That's probably correct. Another Angel. Let's see if he accidentally gets rid of his token. Rough. I mean, that's the worry with the deck is... I mean, this can happen to any version of... Oh, actually, wait, no, we have the win here. What am I saying? We just won. We take his angel. <laughs> what am I sitting here, like, being disappointed? Like, we just won. Eh. Act of treason! <laughs> hey, act of treason! Act of treason, or threaten, yeah, threaten, act of treason. Hello, three color deck. Meet Blood Moon. I know he's got birds, but I'm still going to try to do this to him. Um. Okay, so he's seen that we're very much about the graveyard. He's seen the brains. Let's try to trim on some of these aspects. And let's try to swap over to the expertises that aren't killed by a path. That's another thing we need to consider taking out. Pushes. I would put him on Scavenging Ooze. Maybe Push. Maybe Brutality. Oh, well, twin si 20 Scientists. You can't Gorios anything that's not legendary, unfortunately. Gorios is legendary creatures only. Otherwise, this card would be nuts. Probably be seeing more play. It's still very powerful. Don't get me wrong. I just think it'd be even more versatile and... and and powerful if you if you could. Push does seem good. <laughs> it's all good twenty scientists. Well let's switch over to breaches and, and moons for sure. Um you wanna run the pushes as well. Alright boot to the head, have a good run. I'll see you friend. We got moons. Let me just curve everything. Let's see what we're doing. Uh, he didn't see Brain in a Jar. He did not. Although he's got main deck Kasali Pride Mages, which makes me think these are just going to be bad no matter what. Okay. So now we've established that. 
the next thing to go might be the Kari Zev's expertise is because he could stop these with path and that would be bad. And then the next thing to go is maybe not the Vengeances, but since we're cutting enablers, we need to either go in the direction of Beck Calls or the other. Real says, why am I boarding so hard? He's not a particularly fast deck, Real. If he was a fast deck, I think I'd be stuck running these still, but he's not a particularly fast deck. He's more like a value deck, so some of these slower but more solid win conditions, I think it was where I want to be. I don't like the brutality here. Okay. I think I do want to take out the brains, though, at least. Maybe not expertise. So how many enablers do we have versus pieces? So we've only got two enablers for eight, so that's not the right ratio. So let's trim on... I mean, I would put them on rest in peace. Why don't we go three and three, or yeah, that's fine. Oop. No, I think we ran out of time, guys. I mean, I do like transforming a little bit. It's okay. We'll do a game three. If there's a game three, we'll do a game three. I would not keep this. I mean, but certainly against the main deck, Kazali Pride Mage. Uh, yes, real. That's how Magic Online works. This is a decent hand, though. That is exactly how that works. Uh, the reason I'm not so frustrated by it, though, is because it's a practice game. Yes, on Magic Online, if you don't finish your boarding and hit the submit button, it will just go with your initial build. There's no, there's no, you know, no if and or buts about it. Brutality is a discard outlet, however, which I don't have a ton of. True. That's very true. I mean, you're limited pretty much to looting, unit, and the natural discard. Go, go, looting. I almost want to lead neonate. You think it's looting? I don't know if we want to make the Forbidden Orchard our, our uh, black source here. Like we may want to have the flexibility of not having to tap it. Real says, why neonate? We have nothing we want to discard. I mean, we have nothing we want to Faithless either. If we hit on the looting... No, if if looting hits Grizzlebrand, it's turn two, Gorio. But if Faithless hits Emrakul, if, or if we see an Emrakul, um, it would have been better to hold it. That's only true for four of our reanimate targets. That's not the case for all of them. But I see, I see, I certainly see what you're saying. I think I still am supposed to cast the Brain in a Jar. I mean, we'll know for sure in a moment here. We're going to see the second card down. Yeah, push would have been sweet. Push would have indeed been sweet, Killer B. I mean, he was on a one-lander. We'll, we'll know for sure in a second, Real Rocks. Oh, man, Ghostly Prison. That's actually really relevant against us. We usually don't have the extra... Um, Okay, so it was another looting. Yeah, we actually, a lot of the time, don't have the extra um, mana to pay for something like this. So we need to make some more land drops. There's a G brand for the yard. Simeon's nice to have. Probably going to bin Grizzle in the looting. Okay. 
Real says, Daddying now doesn't do anything. Ghostly prison. Well, I guess we could draw seven. <laughs> That's true. I kind of want to get the full value, though. No, he's hitting land drops. Another wall. Neat thing about Brandon Jar as an enabler for Beck Call instead of the expertises is that you get to do it instant speed. And because Beck reads, whenever a creature enters the battlefield this turn, you may draw. If your opponent's casting creatures, you actually will draw uh, more than four cards. You'll draw five cards or so. <laughs> Probably Killer B. Probably get at least one land. Yeah. So unfortunately, I don't think we can afford not charging the brain here. Okay, neonate. you really need to hit land drops. It might be correct for me to back call now on our turn because we also get to cast an unit. Baron says why not vengeance end of turn? You think that's the better play Baron? You might be right. Well I didn't have enough or no I guess we could have seen me in there. Instead of charging brain. So you think I was supposed to charge? You think I was supposed to do it in the end step? That's true, and then we could have paid for ghostly prison this turn. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's all we can do now is just do both. You're going to switch the back call now to hit a lamb? I think I'm supposed to cast it this way. That way, when we go to tap the Forbidden Orchard for the Vengeance, the back effect's already... Uh, already in play. We get to eat up these spirits. Although, do we want to be blocking? Because we're actually going to start hitting for quite a lot. Or no, we're not, because of the ghostly. Yeah, actually, we're better off just blocking with these birds, because we're going to be hard-pressed to actually attack with them. So they're, they're actually just going to serve as card draw and... Oh, card draw and, uh, oh yeah, okay, so we've got expertise into breaking entering. We might just want to block all out. Because we're not going to be attacking with them, so, thanks to this ghostly prison. Now he may res be resetting this kitchen finks, but I, I want I like drawing the extra card off the finks. But he might be like restoration angeling this guy. We don't know. But he probably doesn't want to play any more creatures. Yeah, we would have hit the the bloodstained mire. Well, no, no, no. We don't want a normal land at this point. We want the forbidden orchard, real. Like every, every creature that he plays or that we generate for him draws us an extra card. There's the Emrakul, you know. So we could go for uh, we could go for the Emrakul instead of the Grizzle Dad. Actually, I think that's stronger. That is stronger. Pretty sure we want that more. 
Real says we can't do it now. Why not? It's his end step. Yeah, why not? I've got a neonate. I've got a simian. This is going to draw us an extra two cards. It's going to draw me another card. Hit another vengeance. Now remember, we do have to pay for this ghostly prison, which is definitely a thing. But we can brain out the expertise. So, hang on. <laughs> Sweet play. It's powerful. Um, As much value as that is, like the Orchard free draws, like, I think I'm actually supposed to play the Bloodstained. I think you kind of want to limit how many tokens you give. I mean, sure, like, the tokens are sweet if, if you're also becking that turn, but when you're not, it's like just an enabler for the expertise. Yeah. Yeah, we do need to pay two for the Emrakul attack. This is, this is true. And thanks to the way Moto works with Ghostly Prison, I'm pretty sure I have to already have the land cracked uh, prior to prior to when the Ghostly asks me for the two. I've run into that weird interaction with like I think it was like at board state like death right shamans in prisons and. You had to like use the death right shaman ability before you go to the prison attack, and then it's like the mana's not floating anymore. It's just bizarre. Something that you wouldn't think about happening in paper, but happens on Moto. Whereas if it was a normal mana dork, you'd be able to tap it for the ghostly prison on Magic Online. Something like death right. So I don't know if that also applies to something like a fetch. So he's gonna rest the kitchen finks. Was I supposed to expertise in response to this to Beck call to draw an extra couple cards? I may have wanted to do that. I may have wanted to do the Beck call before the Angel came into play, because that would have been one, two, three extra cards. I mean, it's too late now. I think I think we're actually on the breaking entering plan now. Uh, during his end step, I think we're going to expertise into breaking. Attorney says, steal with the trigger on stack. Oh, steal his kitchen finks. If I expertise this resto, does it stop it? Expertise the skite. Ka says, worry about skite. Yes, true, skite does indeed screw things here. He does indeed have Skite. Okay, so we're going to be expertising probably in his end step. After this Emrakul goes away, maybe we'll... I mean, this will get shuffled back in, then we got four shots at another Emrakul. That's pretty good. And this Ghostly Prison is relevant. It's being, it's being relevant. He's sacrificing the Skite. Okay. And his six permanents is a lot. And especially if he doesn't decide to block with the Angel here, I mean, he's oh, he's sacking the prison. Actually, that might make the Beck Call a better play again. The Beck Call might be the better play. Well, yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see, we'll see if we're expertising this or this, you know. second orchard. I don't I don't think so. Because we only have one more back in hand. But yeah, we might be we might be backing when you think about it. 
So what if we back to, we get to block and kill kitchen finks? I still think we want to end step. Try for a breaking end ring. Forty three cards left in our deck. We're looking eight deep. Another prison. Okay. Real says I think we were supposed to back. Now nah, I'm going for the expertise. Oh, he didn't tap the bird. Ah. Okay, so we can have a spell skite. Oh, that's disappointing. You will sometimes whiff on the breaking entering. It does happen. Let's see, what was it? Four, 43 cards. Eight of them were Grizzlebrands and or Emrakuls. Excuse me, Grizzlebrand or Emrakuls. 43 into 8. That's pretty decent odds that we're going to hit one. We did not. I don't, I don't think we want a Neonate instead. I think we want the Skite, right? Or do we want the mana? Is the mana relevant here? Is actually, is the Wall of Roots better for us? Because we're kind of choked on mana because of the prison? Would you take Wall of Roots? It's really disappointing we didn't hit either. Baron says, no, you're wrong. Seven, because Emrakul's in exile. You're right, we didn't, like, Cabal Therapy it back into the deck. Maybe I was thinking that it would. I don't know why I was thinking it would get shuffled back. You're right, it was seven out of 43. Which is much worse. It is, percentage-wise, a lot worse. All right, so we'll go for the Wall of Roots. God, that's disappointing. We'll have to try to set something else up now. Ugh. That's not good. That's not good. Let's loot, see if we can get something going. There's a Grizzle Dad. Okay. I think we're going to be okay. It looked grim, but... Yeah, looting and get lucky. That's what I'm doing. We can use the wall of roots to charge up brain, then we can drain it. I know the prison. Oh, you know what? Wall of Roots is kind of weird on Magic Online. We might want to... Yeah, the Wall of Roots is relevant here, because it lets us attack into the prison. Yeah. Yeah, because Moto's screwy. We, sh we should definitely use the wall for the Vengeance. But can we afford to draw the seven? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. I guess we can. Even if he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we can afford to draw. Why draw the seven now? Well, we're not going to get another chance to draw the seven. We're losing the Grizzlebrand. What do you mean, wait till his turn? The Grizzlebrand's going to get exiled, real. This is going to get exiled. Tagorias. We can get away with one draw seven.
There's your simian if we wanted to charge brain, but I don't think there's much purpose to it. If anything, we want to drain brain so we can set it back down to two. So if we keep Emrakul in hand, we get to pitch it with Neonate, so we kind of have the win. Or not kind of, we have we have the win. We don't want to back Black Cleave Cliffs. I don't really want another Orchard. Actually, I really don't want this Blood Crypt. It's kind of not good here. We've got we've got um, we've got good blocks though, right? I mean, we got a wall of roots blocks on this thing, so I think we're fine. I think we're just overthinking it, honestly. I think we got this game. I'm just trying to do the math on like if we want to drain brain or not. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six mana next turn. So drain brain would be half of our mana. It's it's nice to see that the deck still functions with this many Forbidden Orchards, because like the the benefits of the Forbidden Orchard are, are twofold. It's the um both the Beck of Beck Call and also an enabler for the Kari Zeps because we won't always have the Neonate or the Spirit Guides. And your opponent isn't always gonna play creatures in modern. Yes, a lot of the decks in modern, thankfully, are creature decks for our combo. But that's not always the case. That's not always the case. And since it's a ghostly prison, we don't really want to go this route anyway. I kind of want to just go for the sure thing, you know? Actually, we have more mana than that. We have seven thanks to Wall of Roots. So we could drain the brain. Drain brain. And then we have four mana left over. Just use Semi Spirit Guide to hardcast enter on Grizzlebrand. Well, no, what I'm thinking, Fire Truck, is. Hmm. This is a lot of looks. It's a Scry 3. Because I think the thing that wins immediately would be a Kari Zebs, right? Kari Zebs wins immediately. Because he's, he's got the bird to block. So Kari Zebs wins. And resetting brain down. Well, we'd only want to scry the brain down to one, actually. We're only going to do a scry two. So you guys are thinking just reanimate Grizzlebrand and call it a night? Yeah. I mean, he might have a path. But then we won't have mana to pay for prison. Oh, entering, yeah, it does give that haste as well. How many permanents does he have here? One, two. So we'd have to keep bird. Hang on a second. He'd have to keep bird. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. He's going to sack these for sure. One, two, three. Those are like freebies. Four, five, six. I mean, like, an Emrakul swing is still pretty powerful. If we go, oh, I don't have a Goryeo's Vengeance. Why do I keep thinking I have Goryeo's? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's not enough to attack, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't have enough mana for that. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, we don't have enough mana to do that play. But yeah, we could just put a Grizzlebrand in. And then, I guess, hope he doesn't have the path. We'll be fine, real. I'm thinking. If he has path, he can cast off the bird anyway, so it's not like even attacking uh, changes things. I think the last one on this is the Urborg ability. No, it's still gonna. Well, yeah, it's, it reads four mana, so. 
Even even though I use the herb orb ability on it, it still still is gonna count for the ability. Unfortunately. Pi says it won't matter, always gets the token. Yes, that's exactly what happened. I don't think the haste matters. I think we're better off just having the grizzle brand. If he has the path though, we're really royally in trouble. I guess you really hope his last card isn't path. And now we hope he doesn't draw one. I think the most disappointing part of this match was when we went for the breaking entering and we got a wall of roots. I think that was the saddest part. At least we got something, but it was rather rather disheartening. I'm guessing he has another angel. No? Can't afford to charge brain here with the wall. So we lose wall. Oh, he did have an angel. Okay. Yep. I mean, if we attack with Grizzle Brand here, we force a block, because he's at exactly seven. I think forcing a block on the Restoration Angel and gaining 7 is pretty good. I'm just trying to see if we want to try to haste out something else. I don't think so. I think we just want to spend the turn recouping. Like, um... I know, Suzuki. I know our, the brain could be. I know. Yes, we could have given up Wall of Roots to the Simeon to charge, be charging the brain. I think what we're doing with the brain now is probably just draining it, you know. Draining it and setting up for either back call or breaking. I still think breaking might be better at this point. I guess if we wanted to guarantee it, we should have played the Neonate, because then we could have pitched. And then... This is going to be close. Playing the unit would have been a good idea. Yeah. I was certainly thinking about it. Because then we could have... On the next uh, turn, we could have more mana to play with. Because like, we'll need four to pay for this ghostly. If we're trying to swing with both a Grizzle and an Emrakul. The issue is there's only two more Emrakuls left in the list because we have one of the three in our hand. So the insulin might have to happen. Do we have enough mana next turn to do that? It's good, Corthian. Wish I wasn't going offline because I could play your list. I was looking at it, and we're going to do it soon. I can we really afford him to get another creature? I don't think so. So we're going to drain this by two charge counters. So now it's back down to one. Don't really want either of these, right? Well, actually, more mana next turn is relevant. Bottom that, top that. All 
Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think between Neonate... Yeah, we have... And, and the Spirit Guides give us more mana, too. What am I saying? We got this. So we'll go... We'll go to Brain... Or no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll discard the Ember Cool and then we go to Brain in response, correct? Yes. So you... Brain... I'm going to hit Control here. No, I messed that up. I was supposed to... Um, I was supposed to insulate, I think, before I went for the Brain. Yeah. Because then I would do the brain in response to the insolent trigger, or the the uh, the Emrakul hitting the graveyard trigger. So I actually need to stack this the other way. So I actually messed it up. So I actually can't do what I wanted to do now. Yeah, I was supposed to neonate first. We got lucky though. We did hit one of the two remaining Emrakuls. But the correct, they're, they're, just just for the record, for those watching, I mean, this is me playing a new deck, so I'm not gonna be great at it. But um, ooh, does he have the path? Read to lose. Cord for but yes, the correct the correct line. We 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 got rewarded. Not rewarded, but we got lucky. Cord for four, and this is Oh, it's just the practice room reel. We'll try. So let's do the math here. Did we did we actually get there or did we not? So he... My opponent, I sacrificed the Finx because that's uh, for life. He needs to keep something to block the Emrakul. So it sacks the spirits because those are free. Sack the things because you want them to gain you life. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe sack a land. Six. Block, block. Yeah. So we wouldn't win that turn. We'd have to We'd have to set up the back call or another reanimate before we even win, right? Well, no, that's not true. Because we're keeping... These aren't temporary reanimates. We're keeping the Grizzle and the Emrakul so we would win... Oh no, it's not a big deal, Jane. We're 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 learning a new deck. We're playing it in the practice room. But yeah, uh, fire truck. We would have had to. The issue is is the is if so we had the um, when we had the breaking entering on the stack. The issue there is that I had to neonate first. We needed to put the Emrakul shuffle back into my library trigger on the stack first, and then we would um, bring the. Um, Oh yeah, I'm also exhausted. It's five in the morning. I meant to go offline an hour ago. Uh, Jing, Jinga. No, that was fun. I I like the deck. We won with it once. We lost with it once. But both in the practice room, both good learning experiences. This is just a prototype too. I I, I don't think it's optimized yet. Uh, the mana base I think is the first thing it needs optimization. I think the stomping ground for the two ancient grudges is really greedy too. I have not Austin. That's right, we were talking about Fiery. So we assume my opponent had Fiery Justices in his list, right? Or the previous opponent? No, this is the same guy. Yeah, the nice thing about Justice, and I think a lot of people don't think about, is the fact that it's and or players. So yes, they do gain the five, but you can do a really nice play of like, you can split it, you could kill like two, maybe even three creatures of theirs. And then if there's any remaining damage that you didn't get to deal, you get to deal it to them. So a lot of the time, like, a lot of people think of Justice as, oh, I can't play that card, like, my opponent's gaining five. No, they're not. Justice, in a lot of cases, is kill two or more creatures and still hit my opponent for, like, one or two damage. So you, they're really only gaining maybe, um, maybe, like, three or four life. A lot of the times, that extra point of damage is going at their face. So it, it's definitely a fun card to brew around. There's a lot of things you can do with it. You can, you can run, like, 
Kabu Predator. There, there are ways to abuse it if you want to build like a Naya Value deck. Uh, Predator or building into the deck ways to end the game that don't involve... Um, so this is Predator. Whenever an opponent would gain life, put that many 1-1 one -one counters. Um, that's why Justice is so absurd with Kabu is because you could go Kabu if they don't have a removal for it. The next turn you go um, Justice, it'll gain plus 5. But no, I haven't considered Garg. I think the deck's fine. I think I'll just need to practice it. Uh, and not be tired. It is 5 in the morning. Jinga, it's good to see you, friend. I've been looking for other Magic streamers to show um, the new... Have you seen this, Jinga? Have you seen... Um, real quick. Have you seen Game Wisp? Reign of Gore. Jinga, have you been made aware of Game Wisp? I'm trying to tell all the other streamers about it. Um, it's really cool. It keeps track of all your subscription perks. So whether or not you, you're a Twitch partner, it's it's just really nice. I get to keep track of everybody. So it, it does two things. The first thing is, is it enables a non-partnered stream to have subscriptions. The other thing that GameWist does is it lets you keep track of all the benefits in your subscribers really nicely. Like, for example, for Kyria, I need to fulfill their brew session with me. They have yet to input their bot command or their friendless information, but I can just send reminders for that. It's really cool. Highly recommend it. We can talk more about that off stream if you'd like. You can always message me and we can talk about it. I sometimes Skype some of the other uh, Magic streamers, by the way, Jenga, and we talk about streaming strategies and cool decks. Um, I'm, making a mu I'm, a, I'm making a deck much like this, but I like to cut black. Only thing black really gives me is Gorius. I don't think you need it. Play green for acceleration. It's like a red-green Karizev expertise list. Well, it's really simple to set up, though, Jenga, I would say. I was really pleased with it. But yeah, a lot, a lot of changes to the stream tonight, guys. I, I actually wasn't going to go live, but I wanted to anyway. Uh, just because I was so excited that I got everything up and running. The um, um, that I got the, um, the new features up and running. I got the new music running, the Amazon, and I've also got... Um, all the new uh, stream stuff ready. But yeah, as far as people were asking about the schedule, about Tuesdays and Thursdays, those are the ones I'm not sure about, but Sundays, Mondays, Sundays, and Saturdays, sorry, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, I know that these times work for me. The, thurs the Tuesdays and Thursdays are going to maybe not always happen, but I think a lot of people were pleased to see that I, I've got a steady schedule again. So, and these, these are new. I, I added new buttons. So, a lot of these, you can click them and they'll take you somewhere. Uh, so, if you're new to my channel and you're like, well, where is everything? It's, it's right below. Just push that. And I've got a lot of my videos saved over the years. And a lot of them are stacked. So, it's like 23 videos, 65 videos. So, if you kind of want to see where we came from and where we're, where we're hoping to go. I, I, I mean, I like the deck a lot. Um, are you here, Corthian? Yours was the deck I was planning on doing next. Let's see if you're in here, friend. You are. So, um, it's 5.21 in the morning, so I can't promise that I can do anything else. But let's at least talk about your list real quick. And I can kind of give you some of my initial thoughts. I know you told you whispered me two of your changes, two or three of your changes. Let's see, Brew Session with Brew, Corthian. So your modern Abzan, I think you, I think it was you who messaged me. You said you want to change some stuff. We were also talking about, who. this was uh, Balls McGee's list. You're also in here, Balls McGee, so that's another deck we could talk about. Ike's not here, but he gave me a Blood Sultai. And Kyria gave me a Lightning Coils deck to play around with. It's interesting. I was thinking of doing like an Aristocrats for Kyrie's deck. Okay. 
you remember the changes off the head, off the top of your head, Corthy? I could look at our our personal messages. You um. Let's see. What did you say? Yeah, lighting coils. It's the one where if you had five creatures die, uh, you get five three ones with haste at the beginning of your turn. I think it's certainly a worse card to be playing with all the Coligan's commands and all the Abrupt Decays coming back into people's decks, but um, ooh, that's a pretty Inquisition. What were the changes, though, Corthy? I'm, I'm sorry, I um, I can't find your message. <laughs> oh, wait, here it is. I made some minor changes to the sideboard in the deck I sent you. Took out Damnation for Wrath of God. And the two pieces for Tormod scripts. Okay. Oh, you made those changes. Oh, okay. Changes have been made. Cool. Oh, man, Sigarda. You know what Sigarda makes me want to do every time I see her? It makes me want to splash uh, blue in this deck and run... Uh, oh, God, what is that card? It's like a really bad control magic, but nobody knows about this interaction. Okay, okay, so, so this is... This, I love talking about stuff like this. Alright, so take something like Sigarda or um, Judges in the Room, you're going to hate me, but... Wrong Sigarda. You're going to hate me for this, but take something like Sigarda or Tajiru... Um, Tajiru... Uh, Tajiru Preserver. So basically anything that says spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence. So Tajiru... That's how you spell it. Preserver. Tromlet says we don't need the black expertise. Okay. Oh, you might be right. I, I haven't actually had a chance to test those two yet, so if we cut those, maybe we have more room for more removal or, or something. Oh, you're, you're a judge, Dumbo? The uh, the Tajiru Preserver also says spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice further. So what if we added in something like this? Uh, it's a Demir card. I don't know where it's from, Jenga. Hang on a second. I think I have some copies of it. I can't think of the name of the card off the top of my head, but I will find it. It's CMC4. It's going to cut off a lot of these. I also know the colors. It's the mirror colored CMC4. Surprised nobody's named it yet because this is something we've messed around with before on the stream. It shouldn't give, be giving me this many cards. Hang on a second. Let's just specifically fours. Here we go. I must not have any copies. Okay. Fair enough. God, what is the name of that card? It is one of my pet cards. Um, target opponent. The split card that's not pet call is this one. Breaking entering. Uh, Sam Keta lets you see eight cards deep. If the reanimate, if the reanimate target's already in the graveyard, even better. But this lets us see eight cards deep. So think of it like looting for eight, and then you get to reanimate. Also gives it haste. Also lets you keep it, which is neat. Um, yeah. Really neat enabler. Works with both the expertises and brain. God, what is the name of that card? Soul something. Ransom. All right, cool. All right, so, so bear with me here. So we're going to take Sigarda. So again, Sigarda is... Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence, right? The Juru Preserver has the same wording. Spells and abilities your opponent's can't cause you 
to sacrifice permanence. So now let's get into this weirdness. All right, so you take something like Soul Ransom, right? All right, Soul Ransom, enchant creature. You control enchanted creature. Discard two cards, colon. That's really important that there's a colon there. Soul Ransom's controller sacrifices it, comma, then draws two cards. Only any, only any opponent may activate this ability. Because it says only any opponent, that ability, the discard two cards, colon, is actually your opponent's ability. It's not your ability. It's your opponent's ability. So let's go back to the other card. Well, Sigarda says, spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice. Oh, well, wait a minute. Does my opponent control this ability, right? It says only opponents may activate this ability. If they were to activate that ability, it would be an opponent, it would be, um, it would be, it would work into this wording. It would be an opponent's ability that they controlled, right? I know this is really confusing, but the end result of something like Sigarda plus something like this is hilarious. What happens is uh, you get to continue keeping their creature because you don't have to sacrifice it because of something like this. Um, because they control the ability. And then they discard two cards and we draw two cards. Correct, Samcat. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter if we control the card. What matters is they control the ability, and it says spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to sacrifice permits. I know, I, I know I was gonna irk all the judges in the room. Again, I'm I'm sorry, Dumbo. But yes. In a really, really weird, convoluted way, you get to get your opponent. Uh, I tried brewing a deck running both Tajuru and Sagarda. It was a mess. It was like a four color uh, four color rampy deck but correct the opponent is the one putting the ability on the stack so they control the ability correct thank you Dumbo that's also why I was hoping the reason I said that Dumbo was not to get you fired up I was actually just trying to see if there was a judge in the room but uh, yeah so so the end result of this is they discard two cards thinking they're gonna get their Tarmogoyf back or whatever they're playing whatever creature they're playing the end result is they discard two cards, you draw two cards, and you still have the soul ransomed creature. So we were literally we were literally brewing the deck, I guess just kind of for a, a thought experiment, just to see how many how many of my opponents would realize the interaction. I kid you not, when we played this deck, I don't know if I still have it in our, our deck archive. I remember when we played the deck, all of the opponents that um, we got that board state off against would try to activate the Soul Ransom. Not knowing that that, that was what would happen. I'm sure there have been articles written on this. I'm sure somebody's talked about it. There we go. So it's on, the, it's on MTG Salvation. So you don't have to hear it from me or Dumbo. I can show you guys that it actually works that way. If I play Soul Ransom, control Sigarda. Key question is whether to control the source, the one who activated it. There you go. Yeah. It is sneaky. That was I think that was one of the reasons we stopped playing it because it wasn't even that good because we couldn't figure out how to make the rest of the deck good. But it, it just felt so cheaty faced, but it, it was it was satisfying for that one stream that we did. It was like really just a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't think about that. I wouldn't think about that, you know. Although I mean I would I would be scratching my head a little bit like why why so specific, you know? Why specifically Soul Ransom? Why aren't you just running this, you know? Out of all the mind controls that I've seen played in, in modern, Threads is by far the most played. I, I feel like this card needs to see more play. Like, Threads is very powerful. Maybe set my filters. Threads of Disloyalty? Just just on the subject of mind control effects, still very cool. Uh, I mean, I th think it needs to be in the right deck, but I still feel like this card is really good. If not a sideboard card. In, in any deck that can pull off blue-blue, I still think this card's got a lot of power level. We haven't seen a lot of it recently, but um, yeah, I mean, I see a lot of Tarmogoyfs running around right now. 
Anyway, just just my thoughts. I'm going to go to bed, guys. It's been fun. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for letting me test all the new features. Really hope to see some more people send in deck lists. I love to tweak some more deck lists and play them on stream for you. Um, yeah. I know, but I, I like I like living. I like being alive. I tell you what, real. The um, yeah. Good night, good night, Jenga. Are you live? Are you going live soon? I'd love to host somebody. Let's see if anybody's up. I see you, balls. I should say McGee. I'll see you, McGee. But yeah, I'm excited. So so we got your list, Ike's list. Kyria's list and Corthian's lists. I actually still have three people who haven't finished doing their deck list. That's another cool thing I'm trying to tell you about uh, Jenga, the Game Wisp, is, and this is what it looks like when you go to the homepage. Let me just go ahead and link this to you, man, because you need, you need to check it out, dude. You're another streamer. I think, I think, I think you'd really benefit from taking a look. It's, it's really, what's the word? It's kind of cool because you get to set like your. Um, let me show you the the tiers page. So this this is this is it right here. Like you get to set your price. You get to set your perks, and you can even add more uh, tiers eventually. But it's it's neat. It's really neat. But yeah, we'll probably do Corthian if you're here. We'll do your Abzan junk list or Balls McGee if you're here. I'll do your Walkers list. It does look like a lot of fun. It's a deploy the gate watch. Okay, so Blitz Terran is playing Legacy. Quasi is playing Legacy as well. What this guy, Legacy Maverick. I also like his interface. Yeah, def definitely do Jenga. I'm, I'm not trying again. I'm not trying to say. That you you have to do it. I'm I'm just merely suggesting it. What do you guys think about this guy? I see Knight of the Reliquary. We should host this guy, right? This looks sweet. Well, I, I would assume Knight, because he's Maverick. Here's he. Sometimes I just like to check see, out a stream like before I host. Cool, but man, Tracker has been an all-star for me. Um, oh man, he's got tireless in there. But no, uh, I'm curious which white guy you're talking. Hey, we're gonna about. host this guy. All right, guys, I'll see you next stream. You guys, all Ray, what's his name? See you guys next time.